Boys, welcome to another episode of Bustin' with the Boys. I am your host, Will Compton. Our boy, our co-host, Taylor Lawan, who's in the Riley Green interview but not present with us today, he is currently getting them, getting that drywall put up for his mouth, dude. He's he's getting his permanents put in, his permanent teeth, so hopefully his uh, his uh, temporary stuff falling out at nighttime. But anyway, he's got a full day ahead of him, so the boy's not going to make it. We are... About to break down, we got George Kittle at WrestleMania. We had a Riley Green interview. The boy is phenomenal. He comes back on the bus. He's absolutely blowing up. Shout out, no free shout out, of course. The little girl, Roos, Cerulean Bell, she turns one shout out. Actually, today, I'm recording Monday. It's Tuesday. You're listening. But hey, round of applause for Cerulean Bell turning one years old. Um, we're also getting into March Madness, the LSU-Iowa women's basketball, because the women's basketball is way better than the men's. Before we do get into that, this podcast is brought to you by the one, the only Chevy Silverado. Football, season's o- football season is over. March Madness is over. Thank God. But that doesn't mean we're going to stop rooting for our favorite team. The Chevy is franchise player. The Silverado, a truck with unstoppable grit and determination. According to J.D. Power, Chevy trucks have earned more new vehicle quality awards than any other brand out there. That's some serious hardware. That's why the boys got himself a ZR2 Chevy Silverado. Head over to Chevy.com to learn more. Uh, the Silverado is as strong and dependable as the people who drive them like you guys, like myself, just gritty. We got to bleep that out. For JD Power 2022 U.S. Award Information, visit jdpower.com forward slash awards. Boys, it was a solid weekend. The little girl, she obviously she, she's she's one years old. One years old. Time absolutely flies. For everybody that's wondering, she is walking. We've seen about eight steps out of her. We don't have to get her to turn in her iPad and her playbook. We don't have to put her up for adoption. She is worthy of being in the family. But the birthday party couldn't win any better. She had a lot of fun. She had kind of that separation anxiety. She's getting to that age where, you know, new people come in and she doesn't want to You try and like let, you know, your dad and our parents and other people hold her. And she's kind of like gripping you stronger. Um, but all in all, a very good one-year-old birthday party and also a celebration of just being a parent for a year like that shit is wild bro my wife celebrating her after having that 40 something hour laboring experience but um yes we will do babies get like cake or is it like a baby for like do they get like cake like we would eat on a birthday yeah, or is so, it like a baby for so like- there's this like smash there's something called a smash cake and uh charles dad her grandpa made her a smash cake this little double layer thing it's kind of her first time getting into the just having something like that, getting the sugar involved and everything else. She has fruit and all that fun stuff, but it was her first time, her first little cake eating experience. She was a little hesitant at first. I'm whipping the icing up with the finger and trying to like, you give it to her and she's like shaking her head no. And then she kind of, you kind of force it on her lip for a second. Sounds weird. Um, And she realizes, yo, this shit kind of hits. And then she just starts digging in. It was awesome. The boy, you know, follow me on Instagram, underscore Will Compton. You see some flicks on the gram. Um, but yes, they have something called a smash cake, and they just get in and dig in, bro. Is it just a normal cake? Basically, I think yeah, so. No, I don't, I don't know like, why they call it a smash cake other than just like you can smash ingredients. it. Really, uh, the shit we grew up on, vegetable oil, canola oil, yeah. you know what I mean? Just making a flour-based sugar rush cake. Um, You're going to make her follow some sort of weird diet growing up? Like, are you going to say, like, no sugars, no soda? No, I mean, I don't think I'll do that. I think I'll be, we'll be conscious of what, you know, she puts in her body and just hopefully try and foundationally, I guess, teach her. You can't really teach kids. Like, they're just fucking little animals. But, dude, I go back and forth on that because, you know, not to, not to throw the word woke around, but we have way more access to, nutri- to nutrition these days. Like, people can get well-versed on how healthy everything is, and we're all starting to learn more from documentaries and everything else how bad some of this processed sugar, all the all the nut oils and everything else that are out there that can, like, cancer causing just bad for you overall right like when we're when we're growing up and in high school and you're trying to gain weight like your coach is telling you eat three peanut butter sandwiches before you go to bed and you're you're eating a whole wheat wonder bread thinking oh i'm getting the good shit because now i'm going to be healthy only to get to college and then you learn that like enriched wheat flour is the is the enemy and enriched wheat flour is in like the whole wheat bread right so then you start trying to find that real whole wheat out there then you kind of learn about gluten like you won't learn about all this shit but your boy like growing up like grew up in small town missouri we're eating fucking anything and if i'm gonna sit here and be like am i gonna be super conscious like i'm gonna be conscious about it but i'm not gonna be some like strict dad like you can't do x y and z like she's gonna have her her cakes her smash cakes and shit like that but i feel like i'll be a little bit more conscious about maybe the ingredients per se so it's like 
she wants cake. How can we make a, 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 a healthier cake, right? Like use the good flowers, the good oils. Like, so let's see if you can turn something out. Like Pinterest and Instagram, like some of these people out there have uh, recipes that just look off the chains. And if it, if it didn't taste anything remotely like it, it's like, why not go the healthier route? But I'm not going to be a stickler. Like your boy, well, I would leave my grandparents' house slamming four sodas and then have like three, however many I could fit in my pockets on the ride home because we didn't carry like soda at the house. Not on like a health thing, we just didn't carry soda at the house. You know what I mean? Or I go over to a friend's and just launch cereal into my mouth because I'd be like, oh, you can have cereal midday or late at night. Like we only got to eat one bowl of cereal in the morning for just breakfast. So it's like, you know, they're going to do what they do when they go somewhere else anyway. I feel like it's more of just, I guess, being conscious of and then maybe teaching them as they get older. But they're fucking kids, man. They're going to do their thing. But like, what's the new ingredient that's like popular right now that in 10 years, they're gonna be like, yeah, that actually wasn't that healthy for you. Because what was it? 10 years ago, kale was like the rage and health superfood. But apparently kale cuts your stomach lining. Like for some reason, it's not as healthy for you. And before the whole like explosion of kale, one of my buddies told me this this weekend, the largest consumer of kale or like a purchaser was Pizza Hut forever because it was the like the dressing around the pizza that would come on the platter. I don't know if you remember that. It'd be like this green stuff that came around the pizza. And apparently pizza was the number one or not producer consumer, I guess, uh, purchaser of kale. And up until then, like no one fucked with kale. That's a good point. Like who knows what the new fad's going to be. I feel like a lot of like uh, data and stuff is usually five to 10 years later. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, so I, I have no fucking clue, but all to say is like, I'm not going to be some strict dad. I am conscious of that stuff at times, but then I like try and check myself immediately. Like, Hey brother, like you grew up drinking canola oil. Like it's going to be all good. Like you're too, you're just fine. You got time. Drinking that hose water and stuff. Exactly. Out. Drinking that hose water out there, like rolling around, like just doing the most shit, like Bonterre, Missouri, not to shit on the, not to shit on the hometown, but the small town people of small town America, like you fucking... You know what I mean? Gas station food. You loved it. So, anyway. Since uh, Cerulean's now one, is there a moment that stands out to you from the past year? Hate to put you on the spot like that, but is there... A moment that stands out? Yeah. Over the over the past year. I don't know, man. It's like it's like the whole cliche of, like, time flies. Like, it just does, bro. All the dad... Like, it's... A lot of this stuff, like, being a dad, like I posted yesterday, like, it's just indescribable. Like people talk about wanting to have kids and everything else. And every parent tells you, you know, whether, you know, you're trying to get your boy to go out and they have a kid and they're like, oh, you'll know one day. Or when you're thinking about having a kid and they're like, oh, the love you have for a kid, like, oh, you'll know one day. Or it's just, it's truly indescribable until you're just in it. Like the amount of joy and love in your heart that gets created when your kid comes. And then as they age, like every month seems to get better and better because they, they get more personality. They get, you know, little man mannerisms and, you know, it's just the fucking best. And then you want to slow down because you know at some point in time they're not going to want you. They're not going to need you as much anymore, which is going to hurt us more than it hurts them. Because you think of us growing up, like, you were always ready to be an adult. You thought your parents were always just trying to hold you back from being great or from hanging at your boy's house or, like, just getting in trouble, basically. You just, all you want to do is just go back now and not have to worry about any of that shit. I know. Yeah, now we want to travel back in time or relive it because you just know how easy it is. But just all of it, man, like, it's just... Dude, it's just a fucking blast. I'll tell you this, though. Like, you know how your boy was pre rue Didn't want a boy. The, when the pink thing came off out, out of the cake, I was like, I yeah, I didn't want a girl. My fault. I didn't want a girl. I wanted a boy. I wanted that Willie Earl Compton the fourth. And then when that pink came out of the cake, I was like, fuck, dude. And I was, gonna, I was trying to intentionally be that dude. Like, yeah, I'm not just going to pivot and act happy when I, I knew the whole time I just wanted a boy. But I tell you what, having Rue, man, it makes me not care if the next one's even a girl. Like, having a girl, being a girl, that's fucking awesome. I know having your little boy would be dope. But Rue has, like, uh, it's just cool, man. It's really cool. So you're the, thir you're the third, right? William Earl Compton the third. So was your dad Bill growing up? Or was he my grandpa Will? was Bill. My dad was Billy. And then my grandparents wanted to call me Little Billy. And my mom was like, fuck no. Like, you are not. Shut up. He's so, not going to be Little Billy walking around. So if you, little Bill would have been nice. Little, just Little Bill. If, and so if you have, if you end up having a boy, will you go, like, will he just go by Willie? Or? I think I'm going to do um, Liam. You're going to end Liam. it with you? 
No, no, oh, no, no, William. Because oh. there's the, like you know the the boys that are named Liam. Like some of their full some of their first full name is William. Oh. Take the last four L I A M Liam. Might just go by Liam. It's actually smart. That's pretty cool. But we're dabbling with a couple names. It's the first time I've actually thought about maybe I get away from the fourth. Probably not. If my wife's listening to this right now, like I'm strong on, we're not. I'm not moving. The heels are digging in the ground for William Earl the fourth. You know what I mean? I just think it's fucking cool, man. I just think like having the, what is it, suffix? Or the Roman numerals, what's it called? I'm trying to think when you click on the, uh, when you're filling out for like flight information or something, you're trying to put the third. That little number at the end, I, I just think it's cool. And Earl, like, I used to fucking hate Earl growing up, and now I think it's sick. Low-key, I kind of want to go by Earl. The fourth is like, it's not just, you have the IV then. The IV, bro, the- yeah. Yeah, but... I don't know. It'll be it'll be cool. I'm the boy. I'm gonna start dropping the troops off. You know what I mean? We're gonna start. The boys are gonna start coming out of the helicopter in hot here pretty soon, and we're gonna see what we can what we can make shake for this kid number two. It'll be two hundred two. It'll be a little chaotic, but that's kind of the you know that's kind of the route we wanted to go. Yeah, grow up together. That's why. Also, I wouldn't care if it's a girl too. You get. I heard one of my boys was telling me the other day he didn't care if it was two. Like it was like, hey, what do you want, a boy or a girl? And he's like, I don't care. Uh, shout out the boy Colton Wigger. But it was two boys or two girls as long as I get two in the same just so they can grow up really good friends and i'm not saying like a boy and girl can it's just like you know you got somebody who you're gonna hang out with the whole time so it it doesn't matter to me it's your, like i selfishly want a boy because if i get two girls like we're thinking about three kids but if i get two girls and i'm fucking surrounded by females like that's when the dads shell up they get quiet over time you know what i mean that's when they start to not speak as much anymore they're overtaken i've seen it happen it's a sad thing and then one day you basically have to wait until they, there's a friend or a boyfriend or they're going to marry somebody that, like, oh, finally a fucking dude in my life. I can open up a little bit more. Maybe my opinion does matter. Um, but we're spending a lot of time on talking to kids stuff. Love the family vibes. Rue's one years old. Uh, Ohio State. We went to Ohio State last week. That was, a, that was a great time. I know the boy Jerry, he was kind of hosting us around. He's a little weary about us at first until we made a lot of common connections. But the Ryan Day interview's out. That went really good. He shouted out how Nebraska was. The 2021 Huskers were, has been the best three-win team he has ever seen in college football. You guys can check that interview out. Coach Hartline, Brian Hartline, he was an absolute stud in the league, drafting the fourth round, white boy receiver, getting it how he lives, dude. Um, Miami Dolphins, he played for Miami, had a few. I think he had had three. I don't want to put that number out there. Multiple thousand-yard seasons. Never wanted to coach in his life. Got conned back into going back to his alma mater. Ohio State to coach. He absolutely loves it. You can tell he's a competitive son of a bitch, dude. Um, You just see it when he talks and everything else. But again, Coach Day, Coach Hartline. And then we interviewed Paris Johnson, who's going to be a top, who's going to be like a top 10, top 20 pick in this upcoming NFL draft. He was really cool to sit sit down with. The dude is an absolute tank. He's 21 years old. Potential as high as he doesn't have a ceiling, dude. Uh, and he, we're pulling for him now. He's one of the boys. We had an uh, an awesome time that night at Seesaw. It was Seesaw. Incredible time at Seesaw. We sold out crowd. We had a lot of fun. We did the little Chuck bit. We did a lot of fun stuff. Um, also, like, I, don't, I forget his name, but shout out one of the boys who just, after the show, he had, like, tears in his eyes. His dad was is, was a, is about to pass. Shout out the boy. Um, and the boy just wanted to hug because he was just fired up just to listen. It's like stuff like that, reactions like that is like, is a good reminder on doing the podcast and everything else. And um, the boy, it was a strong hug. You could tell he was in and you could tell he was super happy to be there. But we're going to LSU this week. Shout out to LSU women's basketball team. We're celebrating the Natty at Fred's Bar and Grill. Uh, We still got tickets. I assume we still have tickets. That's been one of our lowest selling spots. It's all good. Like Jocko Willing, good. Didn't sell a lot of tickets, good. You suck. You're not, people don't like you. Good. More time to do more work. Put into the crowd. We got to build our base down there. Jack, you got any words of encouragement? Yeah, I mean, we, we've we heard word that LSU is a town that's fly by the seat of their pants, last minute type cats. You got to appreciate say, it. They say that the, the line's going to be crazy, buying tickets at the door. And that makes us a little nervous. But if they, if they do show out, that's going to feel good. Absolutely. And, and it's good. like, at the end of the day, like... It's part of the gig. 
Sometimes you're going to hit some adversity. You're going to hit some bumps in the road. Bill Burry talks about doing shows for eight bucks for a show. Eight people would be there. Whatever his little motivational speech was. Everybody start. Like, you get humbled along the way. If, we, if we're fucking performing in front of seven people, it'll be the best goddamn show with those seven people in our lives. We might just sit in a circle and all have to do a podcast ourselves. You know what I mean? We're not going to shy away. Just, like, what's the worst that ha what's the worst thing that would happen if nobody showed up? We have a good time. We have a good time. We well, party. maybe our ego gets bruised a little bit. Yeah, but, but it's like that's a, that's you know, hey, that shit happens at times. The ego's gonna get bruised every now and then. But that's probably the worst thing that can happen. Is what I'm thinking. Because what you just stand up there, like maybe it's just you guys. I mean, we, we have like 30 people. Aren't there like 30 tickets sold? There's already? been yeah. Last so I checked, there were 29 eight. tickets sold, which is the lowest. Like we've sold yeah. north of 150. I feel like at every show, but. LSU, maybe they're a fly by the seat of their pants. Maybe they just needed the LSU women's basketball team to win a natty to start pubbing it a little bit more. But we'll be down there. We'll be, hey, for everybody who buys the VIPs too, we're doing a little crawfish boil before, do a little meet and greet. We get a professional photo. We do all that fun stuff. It, every stop's been a great time. I And I hear nothing but great things about Fred's Bar. Like, even if afterwards we're just to hang out and we just want to party with everybody else, not even we'll say we're hosting the party, but at the end of the day, people just want to go to Fred's because I hear it's a good time. Um, but Fred's, I, I think, will just be a great time. Did we go over, like, where does Ohio State rank compared to the first two stops? South Carolina and Texas? Yeah. As far as what? You got to give categories because when you look at, let's just say food, right? Love the barbecue in South Carolina. Texas loved the bar. We had barbecue in South Carolina. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. The home, home, team. home team. Oh, yeah, home team. That was a good spot. Yeah. Texas barbecue, Terry Terry Blacks. That was fire. But Wario's, man. Wario, that Wario sandwich, again, because I'm not a big, uh, I'm not a big Ohio cheesesteak guy. And uh, Wario's was fire. I think I would have to give the edge to Ohio State there just based on the experience. Like, barbecue, I'm all about. Like, I'm a little connoisseur in barbecue. So just Terry Blacks is awesome. I think the overall experience, Terry Blacks. I think as far as the Biden kind of being like wild, I would say Wario's. And I guess what's the next uh, category? Hospitality. Hospitality. I think you got to go South Carolina one, Ohio State two, Texas three. And I'm not saying Texas was bad. I just think like we were limited in the things we could do. We ended up getting along very well. Facilities. I think you go Texas one, Ohio State two, South Carolina three. In the stops we've been at. Did we get to, did you, did you guys get like a full tour of Ohio State's facilities? You're no, because we had through. three interviews. Yeah, so. but also like we saw some, we saw some familiar faces there. So that kind of took out of the experience. We kind of, we kind of lost our time because we wanted to hang out more with the boys than we did want to see the facilities. We saw the weight room. We saw the long hallway. We saw the trophy stuff. Like you can just tell that campus, like their lacrosse field, insane. I don't know how lacrosse fields are around the country, but that was like just the whole campus around sports like all of the sport sporting facilities was was top notch like getting to see where Vrabel their indoor is nice dated outdated but getting to see like you're around the tradition like I thought Ohio State was sick but that's why I placed them number two and not like one over Texas Texas is just insane yeah and then I guess about as good as Nebraska the final the final one I guess is the live show live shows I don't know what do you guys think I think you guys are a better judge on the live shows. The live show is... I give it to tough. you guys because I stay in my head on live shows. Like, it's all like... Well, it's, I feel like it's very dependent on location. Like, I will put number three at South Carolina just because we were at a tin roof and it was like very yeah. like open space, not that intimate. Yeah. And it was the first one, but I'd probably put the Texas live show at number one only because the Vulcan was like a very intimate place. It was like where you would go to watch a comedy show. Yeah, it's, and um, apparently it's a spot you go to. Like it's on Sixth Street, a couple rows. He saw the way we were treated there, and like the accommodations, yeah. the staff, dude, they were fucking awesome. Like every like time I turn around, someone would be like, "Hey, do y'all like need something here? Like need more food, or like what can we do to make your lives easier?" Even y'all's walk up song, they didn't have it, and they like were like freaking out, and they went like crazy. Got on the computer, were like downloading like a. A legal file of it just to the Lime wire. They had to download LimeWire yeah. to get that song going. So I don't know. I, I really enjoyed the Ohio State one. Yeah. Um, and it was, you, I, Esau was nice. Yeah, I yeah. think you got to go Texas one, Ohio State two, South Carolina three. I think it, like Texas is 
one because it's a comedy club. Correct. So it had a real green room, like not not like it had a green room where you're seeing photos of uh, comics who have been there. You got the stage, you got the two floors where people are even over top of you. Um, Yeah. The other two was awesome. The other two were just bars. Yeah. Like Tin Roof, obviously, is like a chain, but like Ohio, the Sea Song, it was like obviously it was another bar, but they don't really have like a stage. Yeah. Thing. But I still like I love Sea Song. It was definitely a really cool bar and like we had the most amount of people there which was sick yeah yeah no i'm with that dude um do we need to hit an ad read blossy let's throw up an ad read get it in here guys we got about five. Oh, before we get to in the ad read we do got to let you guys know we're going back to one episode a week for the rest of april when we get in may we will be getting back to twice a week for those four weeks in may we're going to be off memorial week um, I don't know if that's news to you guys or not for the boys in the back, but we are going to be off Memorial Week. It's news. <laughs> that's big news, right? That's, that's big news. news for the boys because you guys work your fucking ass off. You guys really do. We got to, and we're reeling in from two to one because we've been going two since Super Bowl week. The boys in the back absolutely fucking grind. They don't bitch about it a whole, they don't bitch about it much. Um, you know, every now and then Jack gets in a mood. You never know what can come out. He, he doesn't get in a mood and complains, but you just know the boys are in it every day all day long we get to fly back thursday mornings taylor and i get to go get in a nap or whatever it is the boys got to usually come back and work because we're dropping when we drop on tuesdays we're shooting the episode or intro on monday when we drop on thursdays we're shooting the intro or episode on tuesday because we leave at the ass crack of dawn on wednesday do all the spring store stuff on wednesday go hard after the live show because the vibes are high we're a little nervous you take the edge off with some tequila um and so we have a good night. We have a good time on Wednesday night. Then we get back Thursday. We fly back Thursday morning and the boys come back and work. And then hopefully we try and figure out an episode like Riley Green for the next week to where you're not grinding on Monday and Tuesday. But all to say is the boys have been absolutely fucking grinding and we were trying to figure out a way. And the simple solution is get back to one a week. They'll be releasing on Tuesdays per usual. Uh, May, the month of May, we will do two a week just for those four weeks in May. Um, and then we'll probably get back to our regular program the one week. So that way we can pour more into vlogs, more into different content, tight end use coming to town, doing more fun things out there. Um, but that's an update for you guys. Now for the real update, everybody needs to go out there and get a, a haircut. Sport clips, shout out to boys at Sport Clips, no free shout outs. It can be stressful to describe the kind of haircuts you want. And even if you look like you got it across, it's hard to know if your stylist can really understand you. Too often, hair care results in a hair scare. Love that little play right there. Fortunately, stylists at Sport Clips haircuts speak the language of hair, specifically even men. Um, you could say that they are fluent in fades, littered in long locks, and just all around clippers confident. Hey, these boys are fucking in their bag writing this ad read. It doesn't matter if your hair is balding uh, okay, or billowing. What is billowing? Look that up, Jack. You can throw in a little. Throwing, uh, corners. I don't know. Look that up. You'll drop in a little educational piece when we do the call to action at the end. doesn't matter if your hair is balding or billowing. Sport clip stylists are black belts in cutting men's hair. They're specifically trained to do so. These pros are artists. You are the canvas, and each of your hair follicles is the happiest of trees. So sit back, relax. It's MVP haircut experience time, boys. That means a seven pressure point massaging shampoo, a perfectly steamed hot towel, and the freedom to not have to stress about a bad cut. Next time you need a cut, come to Sport Clips and get a head-turning haircut from the pros in men's hair. Go find one near you. That is an incredible ad read. Shout out to whoever wrote that thing. You guys are in your bag doing so. Jack, what does billowing mean? Let's throw an educational piece for everybody that doesn't know. Like billowing, imagine like a um, like a smokestack, yeah, like a plant. Like when the smoke is billowing out, it's going everywhere and it's going out. So I think it's when your hair, like, look, if I take my hat off, that's billowing. That's, Got that's you. billowing. Okay. So it's it's just crazy looking hair like this. So I need to go to the I gotta go to the shop, get a little cut. The pros from the pros and men's hair. Yeah. And we'll be back. And that right there, you guys know, like we throw in little wrinkles here and there. That's how you get educated. This is also an educational podcast. I'm glad we all learned what billowing was together. Let's move on to Look, it's Tuesday. That means the uh, March Madness men's final is tonight, right? On Monday. Look, thank God March Madness is over. Am I right? Probably some people love March Madness. I know I'm hitting a little, t- touching a little spot there. Here's my thought about March Madness. I think March Madness, the March Madness tournament, your boy loves brackets. Loves brackets. A 64-man bracket. I think March Madness is the best 
fandom kind of tournament in the game. You got 64 teams. We're all making our brackets. We're putting ourselves. I even love the thought of making a bracket. And then you kind of see how it goes. No one usually gets it right. But as far as men's college basketball, I think it is the most overrated sport out there. I think it's the most overrated. That doesn't mean it's more overrated than, you know, say like wrestling or some of these track sports out there. I'm just saying it's overhyped because at the end of the day, basically everyone gets in this tournament. FAU is in the final four. We're talking about a nine seed. Anybody from one to 64, you're in the tournament. And now we got playing games. You're allowing everybody, anybody can win this fucking tournament too. Like we're not watching the best of the best compete in the finals. We're watching a four versus a five, I believe. And in the final four was a nine, five, five and a four or a nine, four, four, five. Like, it's like, it's, it's like if FAU, FAU had a shot. It's like somebody who fails all year long and just because they passed their finals test at the end of the year means they're in the running for valedictorian. I think it's a sham. FAU is not failing all year. You are going to strike a nerve with people out there. Good, good, good. good. That's what, that's what, uh, yeah, that's what we got. That's what we got. But all I'm saying is everyone has an opportunity to win. Like there's a lot of parody in college, in college men's basketball. But again, I think it, me personally, your boy, I think it's the most overrated uh, sport of the big, I mean, fuck, of the big three, the big four, who fucking knows? I think March Madness, I think March Madness is great for fans. It's the best tournament for fans, but I think it's the most overrated sport. Here's your fucking clip. Men's and, basketball or, or just college basketball? I'll, we'll say men's. They look, and, well, like, like I'm, and I'm talking like NBA as well. Oh, no, no, no. I think, like, when it's playoff time in NBA. I think people are actually locked in, like, uh, uh, I guess I'm just speaking for myself. I, I'm not saying, like, NBA. I just think, like, Everyone gets so fucking hyped for March Madness, but truly, like the finals isn't a very hyped event. Like I, it's like I think basketball is overrated in general. Yeah, I, I'm I'm with you, but I'm just saying, like, just because I'm talking about basketball, like I love watching, you know, playoff basketball, just like any playoffs. But March Madness, you love day one, you love like day one through five, like the first couple rounds because it's all sorting itself out. But once you get into the final four, unless there's some like rivalries happening or some some dogs in there that are actually going for it, and they got some some like number one overall pick or some top five pick and they're all duking it out. Like, unless they got that, there's not a lot of flair to it. Like who's in the final San Diego state and UConn. I'm sure Dogs. people are, people are going to watch it. Like Jack, you can tell he's, he's about it. I know you rooted for Tennessee hard. Like when you got your school in there, you're fucking pulling hard. Nebraska's in there. Your boy, all of a sudden I'm a basketball fan. Right. But all I am saying is I think, when the national championship game is being played, I don't think it lives up to the hype at all whatsoever compared to the magnitude of the start of March Madness. Like when you get the Super Bowl playoffs, uh, NBA playoffs, hockey playoffs, all these other playoffs, right? All these other tournaments, people get hyped for that national championship game. I don't think overall you see that same amount of hypeness for when you get to the finals because everyone everyone loves making the brackets. Everyone loves making And that's kind of my take on it. What, how, how do you feel about I know you like you're somebody who likes college basketball. If JP or Garrett loves college basketball, I'd love for to hear their opinion as well. But I'm just I'm, saying I'm I think a overall they're basketball fan. I like the Grizzlies. I like Tennessee, but like I'm nowhere gonna just like be standing basketball. But I definitely am not on the boat that is overrated. The first few days of or, uh, March Madness are some of the best days in sports, like undeniably. Especially when you're in high school. And you have cool teachers that will let you throw the games on, like maybe during lunch or like a study hall. And you've got like an hour to with the no boys. Shout out. That's a great one. But yeah, you got like an hour to with the boys when you're like 16 at school and you're like, dude, fuck English class. Like we are rooting for FAU. Like they're going to make a run in this. And that's the beauty of it because at the beginning of the bracket, there's nothing but hope. It's like my bracket may go the whole distance. It'd be 100% perfect. And within three hours, your bracket <laughs> is shattered. But it's fun every year because you don't have to know basketball to make a bracket. You just fucking pick whatever. And a lot of the times, like, whether it's, like, one of your, like, girlfriends or a guy who, like, doesn't ever watch it, they are throwing in crazy upsets. And you're like, that is so fucking stupid. And then next thing you know, their bracket is on the way to winning it. Yeah. So that's the beauty of it. It's like there's anyone can join in on the fun. Yeah, hey, and look, I agree with you. I think that speaks to the point of like it's the best tournament for fans because you're right. Those first few days, teachers, this and that, but when it's when it gets to the finals, the flare, the flames kind of died. I agree. You know what I mean? It's like it's like all the way up here, and then it's like 
Uh, and when you say all the way up here, I agree with Jack. Those are some of the best days in, in of the year when it comes to sports. Again, for fans, I think it's fucking awesome. But you know, I, I you know I love thinking that this can cause a little bit of chaos. But if you're listening to this episode, I think I think people can sit there and kind of like nod. And then maybe there's some diehard college basketball fans out there. I'm not saying there's not. I'm just saying overall, I think as the tournament goes, the flame kind of dies, right? That's just my, and you know, that's, I don't fucking watch college basketball. It's like, I can stick to football, but hey, podcasts, we are rolling. And all to say too, I think women's college basketball is more entertaining than men's this year. I'm proud. I agree. I, Disagree. I, I didn't watch a lick of March Madness this year. All of a sudden fucking Twitter was going off about this Kate, Caitlin Clark chick. I didn't even know what she looked like. None of that. I just see everybody's like, you know, some chick must be going off in, in women's college basketball. Iowa dethrones basically South Carolina. Was well, South Carolina on one seed? Yeah. Overall, 42 one. game win streak. They were supposed to be them. I know JP, he was sulking about uh, South Carolina losing. But I see all of a sudden this gal, uh, Caitlin Clark, is balling out there. And you kind of look at some highlights and you're kind of like, you're kind of, you're kind of fired up to see what the women's final looks like. What she's, do you got? The, she's the women's Steph Curry. That's, yeah, that's like what I'm seeing. And again, your boy, I'm not watching a lick of basketball, but I'm seeing all of a sudden like, Oh, there's some there's some energy surrounding this game because this Caitlin Clark chick apparently is like this unanimous MVP in women's college basketball. And you see these highlights, she's throwing up shots midway between half court and the three point line. So I I start to get in the the women's college basketball drama. You know, I've thrown a couple jokes about women's basketball over time on my Twitter career, but uh, all of a sudden I'm I'm bought in. I got a group chat. I got a group chat going off. I'm talking my Huskers group chat. There's about you know, seven black dudes and two of us white boys in there. And I see a couple of my boys, one of them Nigerian. He's like, he's pro culture all the time. He's pulling for this white chick. I'm like, okay, if my boy's pulling for this white shit, she must be nice. They're pulling for Iowa for the game. Like, okay, we got people pulling for Iowa in this game. So I go in, I want to watch this game, LSU versus Iowa. Like, hey, let's get the national title to the Big Ten again, right? So I get in and right out the gate, you know Twitter's going to be on fire because people are not watching this women's basketball game. Like women's basketball, women's basketball took a fat dub coming out of coming out of their final. Now I, I know that's like a little take me saying women's basketball is more entertaining than the men's. I'm saying that to ruffle some feathers and everything else. But all in all, the most improved award goes to women's college basketball. They got everybody talking about it. You know what I mean? Especially you got everyone just losing their minds over this. You can't see me sports spectacle where people are just pure competitors competing and shit talking each other. Everybody's getting involved. You throw racing anything. It's going to bring millions of views to all of it because everybody's losing their fucking mind. So right out of the gate, you see LSU versus Iowa. I mean, everybody knows when these introductions happen, everybody's thinking the same thing. We got five white girls versus five black girls. Like everyone's already thinking it. We're in the group chat. Everybody's having a good time with it. All of a sudden, Fox News dads now have something to root for. They're all of a sudden watching women's college basketball. Fucking all of a sudden, just fist pumping. You're like, hey, dad, what are you doing? It's like, Ew, Iowa. It's like, okay, let's let's take it easy. Um, and then you get into this game. LSU, hell of a game by LSU. Again, I don't watch. I haven't. The best part is everybody's losing their mind over this. All of a sudden, everybody loves women's college basketball for a day, right? Because nothing else is really on at the moment. Nothing's going on besides women's college or March Madness and WrestleMania. But football is out of the question, so everybody's putting all their eggs in this women's college. Everybody's got an opinion on this shit. Uh, everybody's armchair quarterback in it. We watch this game. Iowa gets in foul trouble. Uh, did you guys watch the game? Jack, did you watch it? Oh, so I'm briefing you guys. Yeah. Maybe I'm like, fucking I, just... I, I saw, like, the highlights and stuff, but no, I, I didn't. I just... You just saw the fourth quarter? Yeah, yeah, okay. So maybe, maybe who knows? I, I would love to see the viewership. I think they fucking crushed it. But I'm brought into this game. Iowa gets in the foul trouble early. Caitlin Clark, you know, one of the big girls, I don't know, they get in foul trouble early. The LSU's bench is coming off the bench, is dropping bombs and dimes outside beyond the arc. You got this gal going like six for six, hits a, hits a little buzzer beater at halftime. LSU's putting on a fucking clinic. Like, there's no chance that I was got a shot. I was starts to chip away and come back at the end. I know everybody's tuned in to watch and see what Caitlin Clark does. The, the, the gals dropped over 40 plus apparently in like, Oh, what was it like the last six games or some shit? I don't, I don't, again, I don't fucking know. I'm just watching it for just the love of the game. I'm like, Hey, these girls got some, got some shake to them. This is going way different than I thought it might go. You get to the end of the game. What's her name? Angel Reese, Angel Reese. She apparently, she or not apparently, she does this. You can't see me. She's chasing, she's chasing Caitlin Clark, Clark around like my one year old with separation anxiety to try to get her attention to taunt in her face. I get it, but everybody losing their fucking mind, especially like the whole race car comes in. Like 
that's just sports. That's just competing. Caitlin Clark hit it first, though. For, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. We'll get into that because okay. I, I I love that conversation too. Because I think ultimately you have to you have to compartmentalize these things. You have to put them into their own separate boxes. Because me, I'm thinking like, I love that for the game. Like you need villains, and I'm not saying villain like Angel Reese is some villain. I just love that she was about her taunting. Because even uh, even Caitlin Clark waved her off at the three-point line like nobody go check her she ain't got it and she hits a three like she takes it you're fucking competing you are in the arena we got the cheap seats we're on twitter everyone's got everyone's throwing their opinion out we're they're the fucking ones battling so she takes it as like a slight disrespect and she knows her story i don't she says after the game i'm hood i'm this i'm that everyone's kind of wrote these stories about us all year or about me like i'm unapologetically myself I don't know her story, but I'm thinking, fuck, yeah, go off, queen, like, do your thing. If you got this built up in your head, I get that. You won the national title. When you win the national title, you have the right to celebrate however you want. Whether or not it's my style or my flavor, it doesn't fucking matter. You win. You do your thing. Now, Jack, if that is a, here's where we can get into, and just talking about, uh, like, just, let's just say sportsmanship. I, and I hate fucking saying it because everyone talks about, oh, classless, this, that, like, guys, Look, you're all falling into the traps that is Twitter. Your usual suspects are out there talking about it. Dave Portnoy, Acho, fucking RG3. People are going to do their thing to start building this car. Like, Dave says, classless piece of shit. Like, all the shit, Dave. Like, you're, you're falling for the trap. Like, that's like the monster that is Twitter, right? But let's get this thing dialed in and talk about, Jack, let's say you do that uh, in a regular season game. Because, again, here's my opinion. Angel Reese... You won the national title. You beat Iowa. Like, you, your story, you grinded all fucking year to have that moment. Do whatever you want. Everyone's going to comment about it, but who gives a fuck? That's why I love that she's like, I don't give a shit that I'm being me. So let's say regular season game, because everyone's saying, like, Caitlin Clark did the same thing, X, Y, Z. So is, you do that in a regular season game, Jack. You're on LSU, you're Angel Reese, you do that in a regular season game. If we're sitting there the next day in the film room, and I'm pulling this because, you know, I've had coaches like Polini, Vrabel, I've had these people that I've gotten to learn from. If we're sitting in a team meeting, it's like, hey, I get you want to celebrate, maybe celebrate with your teammates. When we win the national title, you can do some shit like this. But in this moment, you know, like, let's, let's not make it too much about that. We'll have our time to do that. That said, they won the national title. There's not a whole lot. Like, do your fucking... If that's how you want to handle it, do it, right? Oh, Be yourself. Yes. And as far as the Caitlin Clark comparison, that's what I would say. Like, when Caitlin, when Caitlin did that, she looks to the sideline, she looks to the bench and does it with her team for a split moment. She's not hawking somebody around to taunt and throw it in their face all the time. And again, this is your boy zooming out and trying to explain why there's some differences there because i get it. it's so easy it's a low-hanging fruit to do on social media and everything else so and so do it hey keep the same energy here we all know why they're this color they're that color we wouldn't be saying it x y and z i think ultimately everyone have, buys the cheap tickets and say whatever, says whatever they want but it's not that fucking deep like everyone's got their own story about it you were at angel reese post game talking about it she took some things as disrespect they won the national title. You are in the right to celebrate however you want to. And that's how she wanted to do it. Whether or not it's your cup of tea, it doesn't fucking matter. You won. You won it all. You won the big dance. You're cutting the net. You're wearing the championship hat. You don't give a shit, dude. You're like, yo, I'm being me. That's me. I love that. We love to celebrate uh, the Conor McGregor's of the world. You know what I mean? There's a big fan base. Like, you got the shit talk, best shit talkers of the game. Floyd Mayweather's, Muhammad Ali, Conor McGregor's, all these people who do the shit talking. When they're successful and everything else, it ends up coming back around. Like, they all have their moments, right? Even fucking like the Jake Paul shit. Like, everyone blows up when there's some, oh, I don't fuck with this or I don't mess with this. Look at this class of shit. I wouldn't go about it that way. Yo, when you deserve, when you earn the right to win and stand on the podium and everything else, you can do that. But Jack, that's what I would say the, the the discrepancy is with all the whole sportsmanship talk and the difference. Again, I didn't watch that game that Caitlin Clark was going off and then she did it, but everyone's saying, and when you look at it, she's looking to the sideline and doing it with the team. The other one, she's you know chasing her around and taunting. I think that's where in lies the subtle difference. I get that it's the same gesture. Your boy's trying to stay zoomed out as high as he can. I'm trying to stay a thousand feet tall in this thing and put you in the room like, if that's a regular season game, I think that's what gets said. I know in a football, in a football team meeting, when you're going over celebrating at the end of the game like that, I know Vrabel or somebody, but hey, 
teammates, like celebrate with your teammates. Like, let's not get too out of character. And it would literally say, we win the Super Bowl, do whatever the fuck you want to do. But until then, like, pick your moment. That said, they won the Natty. Fucking go off and do whatever you want to do. And, you know, everybody does the whole, the, the, the race baiting and everything else. It's just absolute chaos. At the end of the day, women's college basketball won. You want to know who lost to, which they always fucking do, the referees, because they always want to show their ass and make it about them. But LSU put on a hell of a, hell of a performance. The head coach with their little fit and get up and fucking shining over there. I thought that was hilarious. But hats off to LSU, dude. You got to give them their flowers. And they can, again, they won. You earn the right to win. You earn the right to celebrate how you want to celebrate. People are like, oh, how, what would you want? How would you want to teach your daughter? It's like, listen, if my daughter wins a third grade soccer game. Yeah, she's not winning a fucking national title. She's a third grader. You're going to win with grace. You're going to lose with grace. You're going to teach foundational things that's like, hey, we don't do that. But if one day you earn a scholarship and you become her or you become this and that and you earn the right to do that and you're no longer in my house and operating under, under my philosophies, do what you want to fucking do. And again, she earned the right to do that. Not in a way of like showing her ass and being being some arrogant, like, yo, I'm trying to be some asshole about it. Like you're in the highest, you're in the highest, level of competition the finals go off and again you feel disrespected in type of way you have your storyline throughout the year journalists writing shit about you you're like i don't fit your box i don't fit your narrative talk your shit you deserve it you want it but that's kind of like my piece on the whole don't matter and for everybody who didn't watch the women's college basketball finals you probably should have watched it that's a good i feel like that's a that's a decent little breakdown of it all but that's kind of my uh i don't know it's kind of my opinion on the matter um, what else? J Jack, do you have anything to add or to talk about? No, I just feel like if you're on that stage and clearly Angel Reese is a competitor to her core, that competition, when it's in inside of you and like how much it means, if you're able to like take yourself back and be removed from the situation and handle it with like poise and grace, then you're like a superhero in my opinion because I too love competition. And if I'm in that moment in the heat of it, and some other person has been giving me that shit or, like, she's known to have done that, I'm going to give it right back at them because, like, in that moment, you're so fired up. You're like, yeah, motherfucker, we just won. Like, give me that ring. Get the fuck off the court. And then, yeah, Twitter's going to go ham. And then, but all it's doing is making people want to watch college yes, women's bro. basketball more. That's the best part about all this. Like, everyone gets caught up. It's like, this is what I fucking love about sport. I want to kind of hate people. And I'm not saying I hate Angel Reese at all, but you kind of want those, like, that builds rivalries. To build. It's just like, you're, and you're right, bro. It's like Aaron Rodgers. Say, like, let's just say Aaron Rodgers doing discount, double take, discount. And all of a sudden, you beat him in the Super Bowl. I might just sprint out of nowhere over to the sideline and just go, bam, right in his fucking face. Exactly. That might be a classless piece of shit move. But, hey. We won the Super Bowl, bitch. You know what I'm saying? Like you went on the biggest, in the moment, bro. You went on the biggest stage in your sport. You you're entitled to do some extra shit. Yeah. Like, there's obviously a line that you can go over, and I do not think that Angel Reese went over that line by any means. No. If anything, she could have been walking off the court, still doing it. She did it for five seconds, and then it was over. And then they started celebrating with their team. Yeah, but everybody's bro. gonna take that five second clip and fucking cry about it for a week, and then we'll forget about it, and there'll be another villain. Hopefully yeah, yeah, it's us. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully it's us, bro. But I'm with you, man. It's like, yo, you're doing your thing. Like, it, this shit is, I. That's what I love about sports. And all of a sudden, that day, yesterday, everyone's becoming a women's college basketball fan. It, it started a rivalry not only between like LSU and Iowa, but like now when Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark go to like the league, they're gonna have a rivalry there. As yeah, well. bro. So which like, I love. Yeah, like it's it's and, definitely good for like women's sports for like absolutely, man. And, and and shout out to the women's sports, bro, because that's that was a big win, I feel like, for them yesterday. So you get everyone fucking fuming and talking about it, like, oh, this is my opinion. That's your listen, we're all in the cheapest seats available, a fucking the Twitter app. But that's just competition at its highest level. And I love that it was burning like that. And she felt like, yo, yeah, throw it right back, chasing them out, and again, being herself. Uh, before we get into an ad read, we would like to do our, our, our weekly, like, uh, let's throw, let's throw through of on some shit. You know what I mean? Yo, what do you, has anybody got anything? Yo, Theo Vaughn, this motherfucker looks like somebody who owns a vaping business and gets the itch to buy a booth at a health fair and think he's making a difference. Pussy. Um, not to get all par, par uh, not to get all fucking 
you know, not to not to be lecturing you guys, but it's time we start to have the talk. And you guys know the talk that I'm talking about. It's that three letter word that ends in X. And you'll probably experience it a few times in your life if you're lucky. Uh, I'm talking about tux, T-U-X. And when you need a tux, the best place to get one is that black tux, is the black tux. The black tux makes it super easy to get an on-trend, top quality, guaranteed to fit tux without ever leaving your house. Here's how it works. Take the black tux fit quiz where you pick a style you want to rock and boom, bada bing, bada boom, your tux is delivered to your door 10 days before the day you need it. That's plenty of time to try it on and make sure it wears well. And hey, if it's not the fit that you're looking for, say hello to the Black Tux Fit Guarantee. Yes, boys, the Black Tux Fit Guarantee. Order a better size within a day or two of receiving the less than great fitting one that you had and didn't like, and they'll send another one right away at no extra cost. And if you'd prefer an in-store experience, the Black Tux has showrooms across, across the country. Their expert fit specialist will help you find the perfect style tux or suit and make sure it fits just right. And listen, I know we're listening to this ad read. It's kind of like, okay, here we go, plug and play. But when your boy's getting married and you go through that tux situation, guys are in the group chat, X, Y, and Z, you need to put them on the Black Tux. That is... That is uh, as easy as it gets, dude. You can do it from your phone. You can go into any other stores around the country. You don't have to go in and get fit and do all that stuff. You can plug it in on the app. Rent or, bra rent or buy the Black Tux is the best place to go when you need a tuxedo for a wedding or a special night. And right now, when you go to theblacktux.com slash bussin and use code bussin, you'll save $30 off your order. That's T-H-E-B-L-A-C-K-T-U-X.com slash bussin, code bussin to save $30. That's Black Tux. That's theblacktux.com slash bussin. Use code bussin. Um, anything else? Or should we get to this interview with Riley Green? I know we got shout out, no free shout out. We're going to hit that. I would I would love your guys' opinion. I think if you do the, uh, you like hitting kind of the headlines at the beginning, or would you rather go like a shout out, no free shout out at the beginning? I was kind of thinking about that when I was naked in the shower earlier. I like I like we go headlines and then save shout out for shout out for the end of it. Okay. I feel like we've always done that. Yeah, it makes we have. I just yeah. want to throw that question just out there. If, yeah. I think preferably that's the best way to do it, but. Yeah, because I feel like I've just, we've never asked or kind of talked about the flow. You kind of just do it and then you're like, oh, it's, it's time for our favorite segment type of deal. Yeah. I think it's like a little fun thing to yeah. wait for at the end. And if you're watching right now and you're in the YouTube comments or the live chat making friends, like leave a comment and let the boys know how you like the flow of the show. And shout out everybody who's out there riding and dying on the hill for us to keep long intros and everything else. Like, that's that's what you need. Have you ever thought about doing, like, the not, like like the things that bother you type of shout out? You know what I mean? Pet peeves. Pet, yeah, pet peeve of the week like or something. the opposite? Yeah. Whatever it would be. I think it'd be fun, dude. There's a lot of pet peeves out there. Yeah. You know what I mean? You need, need to figure out a name for that segment. Yeah. I think that could be good. I think that it could be good, especially when you're trying to uniform the show a little bit. Uh, just having another segment to talk about. And just kind of like workshopping an idea. Maybe it could be tied into Shadow No Free Shadow, but like you can address if it's going to be a positive or a negative one. So like depending on the day, like, you know, if you're in a bad mood, like, no, fuck this. I'm about to I'm about to start complaining a little bit. Yeah. If you're having a good day. It's like, no, I'm going to I'm going to glorify a little. Yeah. You know, well, you could have it. you could have both in there, right? True. You could have both. Like I'm just spitballing here. Yeah, you know, like you're saying, shout out no for shout out. You can kind of go about it however you yeah, want if to. You want it to be positive or negative. Yeah. But again, drop a comment. Just, yeah, like yeah, drop too. a comment. I feel like the shout out no for shout out kind of sounds more positive. Yeah, it does. Like we like we need to come up with like a saying for like a like not negative, but I guess it is negative, like pet peeve of. Yeah. But it's like again, you you come correct with a positive and negative one every time. Or can you kind of open it up? Because I do like the thought of, you know, like, let's take off the positive hat here for a second. Like, let me bitch for a minute. Yeah. You know, let me get something off my chest. More times than not, we have more shit that we fucking, we get pissed off about all throughout the day. Um, but I do. I like that idea. Again, boys, girls out there listening, watching right now, leave comments. Let the boys know what you think. Uh, we're going to do shout out no for shout out. And then we're going to get into this Riley Green episode. L listen. Riley Green is fucking exploding. You go, I did. I love following him on Instagram. The dude is a smoke show of a human being, and I'm not scared to say that. Um, but he's a stud, avid hunter. We get in everything. He's one of the boys. He's been on. He was on in season two. Yeah, I think so. Year two when we were in that little shed. Yeah, a little cheap ass garage. 
where the homeless broke in and slept here and stole a couple of things. But, um, yeah, he was one of the, he was, he's in the earlier days, but the boy is just that he is a boy and he was a great hang. I think everybody's going to enjoy it. Uh, yeah, there you go. G G G from the Raptors, dude. Shout out jelly roll jelly roll. I'm like jelly roll. Jelly roll won three CMT awards. Was it best male video, best uh, uh, breakout, best breakout male video, and then digital? Yeah, digital or fan fan voted male video, digital first performance, and breakthrough male video. Man, dude, what a stud, bro! And he, he speaks his stuff into existence. I love. He's like a loser. You guys picked the loser. You know, I know that's his stitch and his vibe. But the boy is a fucking winner right now, Nashville. Everybody's at his back, and I absolutely love that he brings the city along. He brings along his original base of people, which he sticks to, and he's he is a I cannot say enough things about Jelly. I'm so happy to see his success and watch it from afar. And this dude is on national television hoisting three different awards, man. And it's just shout out the boy Jelly Roll. Let's give him a fucking round of applause, dude. Um, but an absolute stud, a Nashville stud at that. Um. Shall we get into the shout-out? No free shout-out. Blossy, what do you got, big dog? Since we covered our God tier of shout-outs with Jelly Roll, um, I'll go to uh, my shout-out this uh, this week is a good April Fool's joke. And I say that not because I saw many good April Fool's jokes this week, but you reposted your April Fool's joke from last year, which I thought was hilarious and got people riled up so, so, so much. But... Yeah, shout out, no free shout out to a good April Fool's joke. I say that because I had a bad April Fool's joke. I posted a photo of myself in a hospital bed that I found on uh, you, uh, on Google last year. Come to find out a week later, I ended up actually breaking that exact same leg that I found the photo. But it's been exactly a year and uh, I, uh, <laughs> I just got cleared to, uh, to return to work. So a full year later. But yeah, my shout out, no free shout out. Go say April Fool's Dude, joke. Dude, that April Fool's joke was, I loved it, bro. When we were laying in bed, Charles, just 40 something, like however 30 something, we, however far along she was, dude, just in pain. She was already like a week or so late. And I'm like, hey, I got something. <laughs> it's just drop a black baby, Will, Willa Erlene. And people were falling for it. Like friends, Taylor called. Taylor called me that morning thinking that. I posted that and didn't say it to him. I'm like, brother, like, take a look at the photo, man. And he's like, well, you know, you kind of get worried when something like that goes out. Like, does he not see it? But I'm with you, dude. A good April Fool's joke goes a long way. Yeah, I love one of our boys in a group chat this weekend hit another one of our friends. He goes, dude, he goes, did you mean to post that to your story? And that was it. And he was like, what are you talking? He's like, whoa. And then I was on, he's like, dude, fuck. <laughs> Just like something that gets you for like 10 seconds. You're like, maybe my career is over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, uh, my shout out was going to be to Jelly Roll and I'm, I can't pivot off that right now. So I'm That's gonna, why you reacted like that. I'm, I I'm thought gonna, you were, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to double down. Shout out, no free shout out to Jelly Roll. Obviously it was all hit on. But there's one thing I do want to say. Jelly is like the most intimidating looking man, but also probably the nicest human on the face of the earth. And he's always treated like all the boys in the back of the bus with respect. And, like, always wants to hang out and, like, kick it and stuff like that. So, shout out to him. Everything is, like, what is coming his way is so deserving. And he's doing such a good thing for the city of Nashville and especially just, like, growing up here. And, like, he grew up in, like, the hood. And I grew up in, like, white suburban Brentwood. But for two people on, like, opposite sides of, like, the railroad, essentially, mm -hmm. to him just still be, like, the nicest human being ever, is I, like, love that. And he's done such a good thing for the city of Nashville. And... Hope he just keeps fucking hitting that trajectory of nothing but the stars. So shout out to the boy. Well said, brother. It's a good shout out, Jack. I'm supposed to follow that one up. <laughs> Boy's gonna shout out Philly cheesesteaks. <laughs> My shout out uh, this week goes to that fan that you put on when you go to sleep. It's that constant white noise yes. in the background that it for me like I cannot sleep without a fan or some sort of constant white noise. Cause it's just too silent and it just like kind of like just not freaks me out. I'm not scared of the dark, but it's just kind of like way too quiet. But that, put that fan on every single night. You get, it gets that little cool breeze going, cools you down. Yeah. That little white noise. I mean, your electricity bill is a little bit higher, but every time that I have the opportunity to sleep with a fan on, I do. And it's 
I've been doing it ever since I was like 10 years old, even in the winter. Yeah. Fan on everything. That's shout a out. good shout out. Shout out the fan. That's a good shout out. No free shout out. That's a, it's like the, the simple pleasures in life. I'm surprised it's went this long without Honestly, something like that. That's a great one. People who don't sleep with a fan, I go. It's. Well, I don't know if we do. I think we're, we're, we, we, we bring the, uh, the AC down a lot, so where it's nice and cool. That, but we that, have we have like a we have like a white noise. Like we play stuff every night. If it's cold like that, then I feel like you can you can be excused. Yeah, the fan. But I agree with that though. I I agree on just a fan or some noise being on. Like up until maybe me admitting that I'm sitting here thinking like I've always rocked with the fan, the ceiling fan, or when you're in college, you got that little that little side piece next to you. When you were young in high school, traveling to camps that didn't have the AC, you, everybody, all the boys would have like fans just set up all around. Dude, fans are, fans are God too. That's a nice shout out, Mitch. I had one in college. It was like it had the two, it had two like side by side ones, and you could flip one to be like blowing at blowing air in and blowing air out. So like it'll get the hot air out and the nice. cool air in. The good one. Also helped if you were smoking in your room. Yeah. <laughs> My shout out, no free shout out, goes to the Tide Stick. No free shout outs to the Tide Stick. Today, your boy, I'm sure you can see it a little bit, but I had a, a cup of coffee and was ready to go. Like I had, I was messing with my backpack sitting right next to the cup of coffee and it hits the cup of coffee and it's about to fall off and I grab it and it just goes all over my arm, gets all over. Like I was like, oh, this fit. I'm about to crush it with this fit. They just back, wanted to rock some boots with it, forgot to rock the boots with it. But, it, coffee got all over me. Obviously, coffee stains. You can see a little bit of a stain here, but the Tide Stick was working his ass off. So I just want to give a little oh, shout out, no free shout out to them stain removers out there, specifically the one I was using, the Tide Stick. No free shout out to the Tide, but if you want to sponsor the boys, we're ready to go. Um, but that's mine, dude. Um, appreciate that, Jack. We're going on an hour. Solid little intro, fun little intro. We're going to get into this. Riley Green, the boy has been crushing it. His latest single that dropped this past Friday, Everybody Get Along. He's also got a, this is some insider information, boys. He has a new single coming out May 11th with Luke Combs called Diff Around Here. And right now he is actually on tour with Luke Combs and Laney Wilson. I'm sure that's an electric uh, tour going on. He's just performed at Lucas Oil Stadium, uh, Dallas AT&T Stadium. They're selling shit out, dude. Wherever, whatever city you're in, you look it up. He will be in Nissan. He'll be at Nissan Stadium on April 15th, is that right? On April 15th, if you're in Nashville, he'll be here at Nissan Stadium. But check the Game Time app to get any tickets, uh, whatever city you might be in. But hey, this uh, this episode, this interview is a fun one. Uh, he chirps a little bit. I think he rattles the boy Taylor a little bit. Uh, you guys are going to like it. Subscribe, do all the stuff. Leave comments on YouTube. We love when you guys are fucking either correcting us, telling us what we should do better, or double down getting a little double down on what we are doing. Uh, but big hugs, tiny kisses. Shout out the boys. We will be at LSU tomorrow at Fred's bar next week. We'll be, we will be in Denver, Colorado. So though you can get those tickets, we'll be posting links, uh, performing live shows, but check out those tickets online. Riley green. Hey dude, the brand. Hey dude shoes makes one of the world's most comfortable shoes that are so comfortable they make your feet and your day a whole lot better kind of like a shout out no free shout out all of their products are unbelievably lightweight you see i'm holding four right now you can't do that with regular shoes astonishingly astonishingly easy to put on slip right into it no tying necessary a ton of variety whether it's prints colors materials or styles there's a look for everyone as you can see here hey dude shoes have a range of products from Tried and true styles, the Wendy and Wally, to a new lineup of casual sneakers called Sirocco, Cody, Conway, and Son of P. Sirocco is the all new sneaker from Hey Dude. Same amazing Hey Dude comfort in a more athletic look that provides a cushiony and grippy step. Also new to the Hey Dude collection, Son P, Cody, and Conway. Brand new style, same legendary cushy comfort. These shoes are lightweight and are in our ideal. For travel, check out more styles at heydude.com. Shop now at heydude.com. The Riley Green. Bro, welcome back to the bus. Yeah. Yeah, man. Awesome to have you. Last time you were here, it was definitely 
started out strong and then you started chirping pretty hard. I think we started talking about The Bachelor, was, right? Yeah, it was good. He was, uh, yeah, I that was on The Bachelor was, back then. But I remember we started talking about your outfit. What's that? I don't know. That's what we got talking about. Your outfit. Yeah, and you started coming. Yeah. I didn't know you, so I was like, "Hey, I'm just trying to make a good first impression." He started coming at me. I was like, "I'm. I don't know what to do now." That's a good first <laughs> well, impression. Yeah, I don't know how to handle he myself. Knows with the boys. You had me here too long. That's what it was. The, yeah, the beginning, cool. it was very civil. But dude, your fitness in man. We were just talking about outside the bus. Like you went. You were in Oxford. Oxford, Mississippi. Yeah. Oxford, Mississippi. Playing at a bar you used to play at. Yeah, like a real college show in a college town kind of yeah. thing. Uh, it was a Ducks Unlimited like charity thing but it's kind of like it's what we we're talking about it's kind of cool to play a stadium and then go to that you know and I, I think a lot of it what i get tired of with the bigger stages is like you're so disconnected from the crowd whereas like I, where I, a girl could have touched me on my foot last night you know sitting on a stool just play yeah. you know and we played 60 minutes 75 minutes and like you kind of didn't want to stop you know because just everybody was so happy you were there so it's like you know with the things growing and you get these big stages it, you kind of miss those shows a little bit. You know, that intimacy of being right there in front of everybody. Yeah, but what about that first time being in a stadium? Like, that's got to be like a, a, I fuck. Oh, really? Last week was the first yeah, one? Uh, we did uh, AT&T. Oh. Last week. And you got to feel like, hey, I've really, I've really made it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of overwhelming. Uh, you can't comprehend that many people. It's 55,000 there. It's kind of like, what's the difference between 30,000 and 50,000, you know? Yeah, 20. But, yeah, I mean, I'm. 5,000 people is more than I know. You know, yeah. that's a pretty good bunch. So uh, it's just a big looking room. You feel like you got to do more than you can do, like to fill the whole right. stage up, you know. Mm -hmm. But it's uh, it's cool, man. You learn a lot on these tours when you go and open for somebody like Luke Combs, or I did Luke Bryan last year, did Aldine, and you like watch how they kind of, you know, because I mean, it wasn't that long ago. I mean, me and Luke Combs played a lot of the same venues, kind of came up the same way. So, yeah. you know, it's uh. It's cool to see somebody like that have that kind of success, too. When you're watching, like, what are you looking for? Like, when you're watching these big performers? We just kind of what works. I think a struggle that uh, that I have, especially, is, like, the music, the show itself can get a little monotonous. Like, I do the same thing, you know, all the time. It's always So it's like, I, you have to keep in my mind that it's the first time somebody out there has seen the show. Mm -hmm. So even the just cutting up or on stage band or between them a band or whatever it is, it's like, how do you keep that feeling fresh when you do it every week? And I, like, when I toured with Brad Paisley, was my first major tour, I guess, opening. That dude's, he's been there for like 30 years. Yeah, he's been doing it's it for the a same long. show, you know what I mean? But it's just, and people love it. So, I, you know, just kind of watching how they keep that energy up, I guess, you know, because it, it seems to me like it'd be really easy to kind of just get tired of it and kind of half ass through the show. Yeah. But uh, it's a little easier when you got, 50,000 people kind of pumping you up, too, though. It seems like, yeah. like perfecting that craft is an art. Like you say, Brad Paisley's been doing it for so long, and you, you talk about sitting with your band and making the same jokes over and over again. Like, I would think, because we do a show once a week. Right now we're on a spring tour, and a lot of our show as we keep going is like trying to move things around and see how it works. But when you're saying the same joke to your buddy and he's whistling out no a fake laugh, you're kind of like, man, yeah. I, I it feels a little more awkward well, that kind of the thing. first time you do it. I, I've done this thing for... Uh, well over a year now where, you know, everybody introduces their band on stage. And I did this thing where I was like, you know, Hey, you know, during COVID, I think I said, you know, the, we didn't play a lot of shows. It's been tough. Money's tight. We're going to have to get rid of somebody. Tonight's going to be our last show. And, uh, but I don't know let the crowd here and wherever we are, pick who stays in the band. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> and, uh, like whoever comes in last place rides back to Nashville, Tennessee in a Subaru Outback with my tour manager or whatever it is. And everybody gets a laugh kick out of it. And then I pass it around and everybody really cheers for, you know, these nerds in my band and like really make them feel good. Yeah. And then at the end, I said, oh, man, we have a five-way tie. You're also got one more show together. Like that mm -hmm. thing. And I've tried to get rid of that for my set for over a year. Because mm -hmm. I do it every night. Right. But it just goes over so well, you know? I know, dude. Is was, there, was there ever a time, like, your drummer would get, like, no applause? I'd be like, the guitar, the guitar player, awkward. bass guy, everyone's fucking losing. And the, guitar, the drummer, everyone's like, well, he could probably go, actually. <laughs> yeah, actually, we're done with him. I will tell you one that was... A, I don't know how I came up with this. It was very accidental. Probably didn't really know his name. Mm -hmm. But I always say, hey, what's the bass player's name? You know, the short guy, where's where's he at? You know, like, and he walks up and he's like, whispers in my ear what his name is, and uh, I'm like, oh man, it's Dave. And then I was like, kind of confused. I don't know my bass player's name, and I said, well, I think y'all like him because he's born and raised in, and I say whatever city we're in. Mm -hmm. And so like, he gets the there biggest applause of everybody. And I was uh, I was somewhere doing a meet and greet the other day. It was, I mean, it was last week, and this lady came up. She had like a real strong Canadian accent. She says, oh yeah, you were in uh, Montreal and so and so. And she said, oh, you have a bandmate from there. I was like really 
She's like, yeah, I think he's your bass player. And I was like, oh, well, yeah. They, she yeah, was, yeah, 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 he, he is actually he's from, from Montreal. Montreal. And then they had to watch me say he was from Salado, Texas that night or Salado, yeah. wherever we're at. Is, is, hey, did shit. you think about her as you were saying that? Try not to make eye contact with her. Luckily, yeah. they couldn't find her. So they're all confused. Like, yeah. Americans are weird, dude. What was the best part of, like, the first stadium last week? I wish Grandpa's Never Died. You know, that doesn't matter where you are. In a coffee shop, that song is such a great song to play because everybody knows it. And, like, they don't sing that song back. Like, people scream that song back, you know? I mean, there's, awesome. there's 20 people a night I can see literally crying, you know? That's just cool. It's cool to write something and people relate to it like that. Right. Uh, but I, I play that song, and I play a song I wrote called Hell of a Way to Go. I come out and sit on a stool and kind of finish the show, and it's always the biggest, biggest moment of the show and also it's kind of the coolest moment because you know a lot of them kind of driving it you know mm -hmm. when you sing a song like grandpa's never drive grandpa's never shouldn't drive probably at a certain should point not drive it shouldn't i wish grandpa's never died and you're giving uh, you Ernest T. uh judd some, some uh weird al yankovic some material yeah, something like that if you uh you see people like crying obviously it's an emotional song like do you ever catch yourself getting a little emotional on stage or is it to the point where like, you've sang it so much you know like you've moved past the emotion of this it's I always compared. It's not an emotional like crying thing. Mm. It's I always said it was like scoring a touchdown or dunking a basketball or hitting a home run. Like that's mm. what that moment feels like. Yeah, it's just that same thing. Like you know when you when you walk into the end zone with a football, it's like whatever that feeling is. That's what it feels like. You know? I felt that lots of times. Going in the end zone, or like when you when you block somebody well, or you know whatever <laughs> else, whatever I don't know. Whenever oh, somebody else, bro, twenty sixteen, I had a touchdown. Don't worry, don't yeah, worry about that. He knows that feeling. Once in college, when too, you, if you guys are keeping well. count, I have two. I have two touchdowns. Well, it's, it's, it should be a bigger deal because when you scored a touchdown, I assume it was an accident. No, it shouldn't have happened. Oh, buddy, I caught the ball. Really? Bro, you get the uh, the old lineman gets the game up, plan. Jack? The old lineman Let gets the game plan. Bit. Okay, yeah. Two yeah, weeks in a row, we get to watch this. Well, he had it on top ready. Just how did you segue me into this on purpose? This is hey, well, this is a well-oiled machine yeah, in here. Taylor does this with every guest. Yeah. That's Delaney. That was not That's you. Delaney Walker. He's more tan than me. It's easy. Yeah, it wasn't you at all. This one right here. Boom. Snipe. Look at this. Running away Come from Come on, man. Well, he, he was looking back to see if I was going to catch him. Yeah, well, I had to take a peek. I got nervous, and I saw some thick boy back there. I was like, oh, he's no oh, way. He's not, not a chance. That's not awesome. Not catching me at all, dude. Yeah, when you get yeah. inside the 10-yard uh, line, offensive coordinators now, they'll get creative with the O-line. Especially Arthur Smith. Yeah. Arthur Smith was always, he's the, now the head coach of the Atlanta Falcons. Every week he would put in some sort of tackle eligible play. Really? Yes. And he'd be like, we're running this multiple times a year. Like Dennis Kelly, he can barely even run in that photo. This is like three years before. We went to the AFC Championship three years later, and he had like two touchdowns that year. Really? Just over the middles, just popped it over to him, little pop passes. Like, oh, that's awesome. It's exhilarating. When exhilarating. You exhilarating. Yeah. And there's nothing better than seeing a big boy score. No, man. Everybody pulls for that. Yeah, everybody pulls for it. It's awesome. That game, too, our right tackle almost had a touchdown as well. There was a fumble in the end zone. And he grabbed really? it. And the only two touchdowns we would have scored have been me and him. We lost. We lost that game. It wasn't a, it wasn't a storybook ending, but man. So yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about, talking, singing in yeah. front of 50,000 people. We're like the same guy. We are the same guy. Out of those 50,000, how many you think are men? Uh, well, I'm... A couple hundred? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Good-looking cat. Yeah, I'm not a good judge because I don't yeah. usually gravitate to the men in the crowd, you yeah. know? Well, but you know what's funny is, it depends on who what the show is. Obviously, I'm opening for Luke Combs. Me and Luke have a lot of guy fans. Yeah. I mean, we're not really the love song, like, you know, we white tennis shoes. It, yeah, we're a little rougher. Yeah. Like our songs are a lot more like Luke's got there. Luke's got the beard. Yeah, little heavier set gentleman. Listen, it's it's a complete one eighty difference. I'll just say it right now. Luke Thank Holmes you. ain't no Riley Green. Baby. Yeah, no doubt about that. You need to be going out. You should just have a, a hot boys tour. Call it that. Hell yeah, yeah. The best looking dudes in country music. Rip around. Who would be the top three hottest dudes in country music? That's think, not right? the one. Where that's not. I knew you <laughs> Whatever that thing is, we all do is like let's rate. Who, that. who are the top three best dudes? I'm like watching dudes. him the whole time. It's you, just like, he's just like programming in his head. No. no. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I gotta go, fellas. Ten minute episode. Yeah, man. What if I just had him? Just who, who's another dude out there you tip your cap to in the country world? Uh. Well, you mean, you mean like as a person, like as a dude. Uh, like, you don't have to say he's a good looking dude. You just think, uh, back in the day, a guy was probably single. He slayed, no question about it. Okay, uh, like you look at a guy like Dirk Bentley, a little older, but man, yeah, I mean, back in the day, some, he slayed. Hey, but those like settle for slow down days. Like, yeah, I took a girl to his concert. 
Oh yeah, like 2007. She didn't go home with you, did she? She was trying to get in that VIP. You could have got there. She <laughs> would have. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man. I, you know, there's a lot of guys like that have been around a long time. I mean, I was out with Luke Bryan. He was like, he's a heartthrob. I'll tell you something. There, are, every show I opened for Luke Bryan, there were a handful of guys there. You know the guys I'm talking about. They're like, man, this ain't country music. You know, it's what uh, those guys. This their girlfriend drug them to the show, mm -hmm. or they came to see me. You know. Yeah. And uh, love that. I'm gonna tell you this is I watch it happen every night because this dude puts on a show. They're seven beers deep, and he's up there and he's doing the thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, the and they're the like, I got that real good. And the yeah. guys are just like, Yeah, yeah, just yeah. love it. Because he's like, he, he does it, man. He does the thing. He probably he ends up turning the guys. The guys yeah. start. Fucking oh yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he's, you can't help but like it, man. It's because he just. He just has fun with it. Dude, you brought up a good point about those uh, those proud boys that are like, this country music, this pop country music's bullshit. Like, why do you think that's happened? Because I thought that Thomas read about it, and he's like, yeah, but when the Outlaws came out back in the day, was like Willie and Waylon and all them, they were saying back then, that's not country music. And now we all look back at that like, man, what an era for country music. Yeah, uh, I think there's some stuff now that's a little more of a stretch, you know? Yeah. I mean... Comparing Waylon Jennings to, you know, Johnny Cash saying they're night and day back then, it's not quite like some of the hip hop type stuff we have yeah. going out. But music does change all the time, and there's a lot of different musically ways you can go in this genre. But I, I always say that the storytelling is what makes country music. A song that has a story has some kind of meaning. That's the kind of thing about country. Obviously, you can go like techno bar and just like people just want to dance, and people like to have a good time. There's songs like that too, but. I always say if it's got some kind of meaning to it and story, it can be somewhat considered country music. Right. But there's a line for you. Are you ever surprised on certain country music that takes off or gets wildly popular? I, I am, but it's also like how many country artists you've seen that have come out, had a song to and then gone pop. You know, I mean, there's a lot of those. So, yeah, so Swift. Yeah, I mean, there's just a... I think that country music, the way it's set up, especially with country radio and this town, how it's so connected, so different than any other genre because, like, where is pop music at? You know, where's rock happen? You know, so like L.A., I guess, I don't know, but you don't have to live there. It's kind of all over, but you can come to Nashville, sign a deal, meet the radio PDs and do this one and have a career in country music, even if you go a different way after that. So a lot of people start here. But I think that, the you know, what, what you originally asked about why there are those people that are like, this isn't country, kind of put their foot down, is like, it's such an era of like, everybody wants to know about the guy nobody knows about first. Mm -hmm. I remember when Chris Stapleton, I saw him playing in Birmingham. This is the it was the year that he blew up. He had the three a ACM awards or whatever. Still the steel drivers. Yeah, yeah. And but I mean, you know, I think what are you listening to was one he had like on YouTube. I don't know if he had any music out, but I remember thinking that was the coolest thing ever. And then when he kind of blew up, I'm thinking like, ah, it's not that. It was cool. Which is he's still great. He still puts yeah. out great songs. But I, people are like that about it. I had a lot of them in my career that would like have burnt CDs of stuff I wrote when I was like 16 years old, and that was what they would request at my shows. Yeah, and those songs were garbage. But they just wanted me to know that they knew him. That's all it was. You yeah, know? So yeah, it's like, yeah. You're saying you were that way with Chris Stapleton. I was, yeah, with a lot you're of like, folks. You knew you were on him early. And yeah, then when and he like, blew up, you're kind of like, ah, oh, like how many times people like, hey, no, no, remember I put you on that. Remember, yeah. I, that's what everybody wants to do. So yeah. it's like the stuff that gets commercial becomes less cool to a lot of fans, I think. But it's, you know, kind of a double edged that's sword. A fair point. Yeah. What's your, what's your point. struggle? Is there a struggle at all of like kind of, Conforming to the mainstream country music and where it's at, because you could easily, uh, yeah, with the backing you have, you could go and put some techno beats on something and have it play across every club everywhere all the time. Yeah, and you know, it's, there's still time. Uh, yeah, there's still time to sell out. It's <laughs> it's such said, a, brother, give me a week. Like, yeah, actually, Ryan, I got a couple of things Ryan, coming Ryan, out right now. A techno yeah, era out yeah. there. things don't turn my way, man. It's a uh, it's a weird time. What I'll say is, it's it's really hard to have blinders on in this town. Just because it's so easy to watch what somebody else is doing, go, oh, they're having success, they're having success. And then also you've got the fact that a lot of these songwriters write for everybody. Mm -hmm. Well, they have a style of writing too. They know what's getting played. Songwriters don't make anything unless it's on the radio and a hit anyway. So they want songs to go on the radio. And for a song to get put on the radio, it has to sound something. Mm -hmm. uh, the word I'll use is somewhat commercial. It's got to be uh, very relatable to a mass audience. So what that does is it takes some things that are what I would say cool and kind of makes them live in a different space, which fortunately for me and a lot of artists now, uh, the Tyler Childers of the world, there is another space they can live in and you can have a great career without having that, mm -hmm. you know, but it, it does, man. It's, uh, 
I'm in a great spot because I've I've kind of got a little of both. So I've got some grassroots following that people that found me a long time ago before radio, and then I've also got some a couple of songs that were hits on the radio. So it's finding that line of cool and commercial and trying to get songs that are that. I think that's the, the struggle that everybody's got. When you're talking about uh, songwriters and how they, they write to put stuff on the radio because that's the only way they can make money, how do you go about writing? Like, Do you have a certain core group of dudes or you kind of bounce around a little I, bit? I do. I don't try a lot of n- new folks just because I, I know what songs I'm going to get with certain guys. You know, like I write a lot of, a lot of stuff with the same core guys. And also it's really... It's not rocket science, mm-hmm. you know, writing songs. It, it, I mean, I, yeah, there's, I guess, some skills that you can be born with, you can kind of work on and get better at, but it's like you, you sit in with people you like. You're mm-hmm. going to write better songs with people you enjoy being around, people that grew up the same way, whatever that is. You know, but I mean, even still, my biggest songs I wrote by myself. So it's kind of keeping a little bit of that both, trying to, you know, find some guys that can write stuff that know what's going to get played on the radio and then write some stuff that's really, for lack of a better term, me you know, and just play it out and see what works. I think a lot of my success came from just playing songs on YouTube or Facebook, I guess, at the time, and just seeing what people thought. They liked it, I'd go record it. When you talk about, like, not being rocket science, dude, it kind of seems like it, because no musical talent over here. I'm, I'm going to speak for myself. I heard Will I sing in the car it. yesterday. Dang. That boy can belt it out. He's putting out Maroon 5 like it was nothing. <laughs> he was getting after it. So but I, you go, like, we all sit in the car, dude, and I'll put that radio up to 10, and I'll be singing and be like, fuck, why? Why couldn't I have thought about doing this? Or why couldn't I do like? Well, I feel that all the time. Yeah, I but it's I like you, you say it's not rocket science, brother. Like it's it's an absolute talent. Like where? How did you learn to even write music? Like how did that process start for you? It was, it's, it's it was really accidental. So my granddaddy Buford was a really witty guy. Like what a name. Wrote yeah Buford Green man. Wrote uh wrote poems and and like drew and painted and stuff. Whatever he he was he just had really good words I guess. But we didn't write songs. I wasn't doing country music back then. But. I, I I think that I got a little wit from him. He was really good with just that kind of thing. But as far as like writing songs when I started my career, I was just get I got so tired of playing the songs I knew. I was playing covers at bars every night. And I was like, man, I, if I wrote a song kind of like this, just to change something up, and people started to like them. A couple of them did well, and I just I learned to write from playing shows. So like fans taught me how to write I, if something went over one line really made people go oh yeah then i thought well it's something more like that so i did that for you know six or eight years before i ever stepped foot in nashville so i, I just think it it made me write a certain way and a lot of those guys that are having that success outside of country radio say tyler childers texas country a lot of that stuff they're not here writing they're wherever they're from yeah, writing right. and and, that, and that's where that comes from so they're writing from a different place than everybody else are those tyler childers in that texas country is that kind of your favorite I, I've liked Texas country stuff for a long time, but you know, I just think different is cool. I mean, a lot of what Eric Church did, I thought was different. You know, like he had some stuff that he put out that's, you know, it doesn't sound like everything else. I think that's the best thing you can have right now. I think that's where success comes from. Luke Combs, when he first came out, there was nobody that sounded like Luke to me. You know, he, whatever the music sounds like, his voice was recognizable. It's so easy now for an artist to get a song on the radio, maybe become a hit, and then people go, and the song comes on, I go, oh man, I love that song. And not who sings it. They have right. no clue who the guy is, you know? Yeah, because so. they would, you would sit there and be like, oh, that's who sings it. Oh, right. this guy. There's, I mean, there's, there's guys with four or five number ones on the radio that people don't know who it is. They, they sing along and tap their foot when it comes on, but that's such a big hurdle to get over unless you have something that's a little different. Right. You know? It's unique seeing the people that are singing the songs too. Like you brought up Tyler Childers a couple of times. And before, like, you hear his songs, then you look them up. You're like, <laughs> I did dude, not so think sometimes that Sometimes that is interesting. Like, uh, who's that? Uh, Coulter the Wall. Coulter Wallen. Yes, dude. Is it Wallen or Wall? Wall. Coulter Wall. Coulter Wall. He looks dude, You look at him and you're like, sounds like. He looks like a teenager and he's got that yeah. deep ass voice. Yeah. It's crazy. Well, I, I'm sure a lot of folks felt like that about Luke first time, too. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember for me, it was a guy named Corey Smith. Dude, he's he a banger, awesome, bro. bro. Corey yeah, Smith is so fucking 21, awesome. 21, fuck the police. Yes. Oh, if I could do it again. Corey, Corey went on tour with me last year. Yeah. Uh, I was such a huge fan of Corey Smith growing up. He played at Brothers Bar in Jacksonville. I feel like I got arrested a couple of times, sneaking into his shows with a fake ID, like just a huge fan of his. Open for him several years ago and kind of full circle, got to call him and him come open for me and it's written together. He's a awesome dude. But it was, you know, you just wouldn't expect him to be a school teacher, I think, when he was having all yeah. the success, you know? That's wild. But never had a song on the radio and had a 15-year career. Is he a good hang? Great, man. He seems like awesome, a good dude. hang. One of my boys, like, his name's Jordan Thompson. Shout out JT. 
but he could he could play the guitar so he would play the Corey smith jams like we just sit down yeah. on the back deck and he'd play them and it's like Corey smith he fucks bro yeah he's got a cool unique voice yes big fan of that guy that you're going somewhere with no that. i just wanted to shout out jt and kind of oh, talk about shout out we love you. hey of course out there, him. Yeah. Corey's out there listen hey he's you're more welcome to come on the bus brother yeah i'll get you guys get, like him though i get hooked up with cool. he's a he would answer the questions of how do you songwrite way better than me he's a really mm -hmm. smart like analytical guy when it comes to songwriting when, when you're saying how smart and analytical he is how come he's more of like an underground cat in a lot of ways like he's definitely like more known in Georgia, obviously, and like yeah. college you gotta, towns, you gotta, especially. I mean, you like, gotta go. You gotta be in like certain parts of the country for people to know who that is. Right. Like, you're you, more of a nationwide dude. Is that just intentional? Like, no, just like, no. I I'll tell wanna... you what's really impressive about Corey is like, there's a lot of guys that are doing what he did now. They're going out and they're having a successful career touring without big commercial success or radio. Think about doing that then before social media, before Spotify. Amazon, all these other ways you could put music out. If you didn't have a song on the radio then, how is anybody ever going to hear it? It was completely through somebody going, hey, man, you heard this guy? And putting a CD in their truck. making them, Or going on spring break and blaring, I wish I was 21 or I, if I could do it again or whatever it was. Police. Yeah, man. And I, like, I just remember hearing it, thinking it was the coolest thing ever, wherever I heard it from, and him coming through and me getting to go watch him play. And then it was like he was coming to somewhere two hours away i was like i'm gonna go there yeah yeah you know, i mean i I'm, i've sat around and played his songs at college parties you know all the way through yeah. but uh and it seems like too um like the way he entertains the crowd like you just listen to his music like whether you throw in a cd or throwing a song like when he does fuck the police and stuff like that it you live, just hear yeah, yeah he does it live and you can just hear it in the crowd it seems like he does a really good job entertaining everybody yeah. to make you go hey have you ever checked this dude out no doubt well you've heard you've heard the live version of that song i'm sure yeah there's also a little bit of that too there are songs that live in such a good space like that like you think about live records that you really listen to i mean there's a handful of them obviously you know the last waltz by the band i used to listen to that a lot and there was some you know some texas country stuff from like billy bobs that i used to love the live version of because the crowd you know really being involved but dude i heard billy bobs is a vibe oh it's, it's awesome man really cool place but it's like that song lives with the crowd in the background screaming and hit. So, I mean, it's it's just, uh, it's cool to see guys that made it that far by just strictly going and writing songs and going and play shows. Will brought up interacting with the crowd and stuff like that. How long did it take you to really, like, dial that in for your performances? It took a lot of watching other people. Yeah? Uh, I used to go down to the... Still jokes? I've, I've, well, I mean, I, I'm, would it be called stealing songs if you, like, cover somebody you know yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. how they introduced a song if it was theirs i mm. probably stole that you know yeah. there was a uh a guy that plays down at the floor bama uh named big earl that my parents used to let me go in and see and he sings like really dirty songs mm. you know uh and i remember being like oh, i shouldn't be here you know but it, he was just the craziest thing he would act a fool on the stage and like you know, like, get people to come up and spin this, like, wheel that had, like, I'll play Sweet Home Alabama or this or Show Your Tits. And, like, it always landed on Show Your Tits. Like, it was weighted, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. Just crazy. But he had a whole thing, and it was, like, such a show beyond what songs he was singing. The songs were, like, 40 seconds long. Like, little just, like, yeah. whatever jokes, you know? And, I like, I learned a lot from that, even though it wasn't so much the comedy thing. It was just, like, it, nothing has to be perfect. Like, it, it looked like every single night he went up there and just made up everything he was doing. I thought there was something cool about that. Yeah, improv's awesome. But like the, I like little gimmicks in shows, like the big yeah. wheel, and there's like tiny slots for other songs, and then show me your tits. Yeah, he had this one where he got somebody on stage and said he had a lawnmower accident and he lost one of his nuts, and he's like, "If you can come here and tell me which one was missing, you can have a free Big Girl CD." Mm -hmm. And this like lady comes up on the stage and she like reached down his pants and feels around, and he's like, "It was eyes closed, like." Okay, which one? She said the left one. He said, "Nope, try again." And stuck her hand back down there. <laughs> <laughs> nope, try. And then she's like, uh, "I don't even say that." Well, here's CD. That's awesome, dude. What are some of the? We don't do that at my shows, just so you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it would, not it would like do building well. on that or anything else. But what are some of the wilder stories you've had at some of your shows? Uh, Something where you always like, whether you're with the boys or you're telling somebody new you just met, hey, this one time. There's been some pretty crazy stuff. I a lot of the. I think a lot of the craziest days that I had were when I was playing those club shows and I was probably rowdy enough back then that it didn't seem as crazy to me as it should have. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't like, I didn't have a tour manager for a long time. I didn't have any management. I was just playing shows. I was driving my truck, me and whoever, whatever buddies could make it. we jump in and we would just head out. And I mean, like we went to some pretty rough areas, you know? I mean, like I, I had a, two or three of my buddies that I ran around with were black guys who grew up together and, 
we went, uh, just not thinking about it. It was like so-and-so would just get a card of mine. They'd call me to play a show, be a birthday party. We'd go out in the middle of just like some country, you know, country places and pull up and we'd all be in trouble. you working through that. We'd That's all be, yeah, well, I mean, just, you know, we'd be looking around and they're like, what do you think? I'm like, I don't know. Let me go fill it out. You know, and go out. of course it always ended up being like, they're in there like hugging her mom and they're all like yeah. drinking Jack Daniels together yeah. or whatever. But there was a lot of stuff that I think if I had a security person or a management or whatever, sometime they probably would have stopped me and had me think about it. But, There's some sketchy places out there. No doubt. Like you just, you look under some of these rocks out there and it's like, yo, I did not know a place like this exists. No, we, a lot of like, uh, Bro, Montana. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You, you, north, you, you get us. We were going to, uh, area. we're going to Gatlinburg. There's a lot of rural time. in Alabama too. You oh, know? buddy, I feel like yeah. that's like the probably the scariest. That well, rural Mississippi. Mississippi. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, we play some RV parks, like just where they do rock crawlers and like dune buggies and stuff. Yeah, real redneck shit. Yeah, yeah, man. I just, uh, yeah, on the redneck, just like the white trash. Yeah, it's, you know what I mean, I feel like that's a classy way to say white trash, right? Yeah, it is. Redneck, yeah, it's a lot sure. more. Yeah, let's just hit the nail on the head. Yeah, that's yeah. The white trash shout out. out <laughs> shout out white trash. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> shout out white trash. I know y'all see y'all do that. I don't know what it means, but. Trying to fit in. Hey, I, hey, no but I appreciate out. you yeah, even man. noticing. Yeah, I mean, I thought y'all did a lot of that last time too. So I just, yeah, well, that's what we were trying to get shout out. Enough. We weren't getting shout out enough for shout out going, but the it was, shout out was the the, a new implement. Yeah, of it the was game. young in the yeah, game. Yeah, so I was at the beginning. Y'all are really good at it now. So yeah. yeah, I see y'all on your show. Dude, shout out you for knowing that. Yeah, man. That's fucking, yeah. that's a big deal. Yeah. When you go to these like, R, like RV parks and see where you're at now, like, where do you think, like, what's the pinnacle for you? Like, you have truly done what you've wanted to accomplish in, in music. 30,000 feet in the air looking at your career. I mean, complete honesty, I'm past it. I never thought I would have a song on the radio or like, I can remember at one point being like, man, I wish I could just write a song that like, even if people hated my guts, they'd have to go. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. Yeah. You know? And I mean, th there's enough people that I wish grandpa never, never died has been successful too, that I can kind of feel that way about it. You know, I'm like, I can kind of be like, suck it, you know? Yeah. Like, you. Dude, and you, what's funny is I, I believe you just based on the conversation we were texting about last week, like when he's like showing his spot, like come down and hunt, like I'll yeah, send the bus up you guys want to make a, yeah, very accommodating. The hospitality is. Well, I mean, well, I mean, you know, I benefit from hanging out with y'all. Y'all are going to shout me out, man. Do the shout out thing. One yeah. Day, yeah. Know? Like, remember that, that one guy, shout out RG. Right. But uh, uh, yeah, but also it's like, it's not like we know each other that well. Like, yes, we, we, we ran game in a successful softball game did, one time. We did get after him. We man. did get after it. Yep. But, uh, yeah, dude, hey, you talk about a stud oh, now on the softball field? Yes. Yo, bombs, bro. He was the, were you the MVP? Did we win? Yeah, we won that game. That's right. That's right. I kind of, you know how the that thing goes. The impressive part was, uh, we pulled up late and I'm like running in, throwing cleats on. And I'm thinking, well, you know, it's a charity thing. I got a bunch of people here. I probably won't even play. I'll be at the end of the list and I'll get there and like walk into the dugout. The national anthem is and they go, First up, number nine, Riley Green. I'm like, oh, crap. So I go up there to the plate, and he hit it off the foul pole, man. Really? Yo, hey, uh, he's got See, some but, fucking but juice to him. Were you a big baseball guy growing up? So, I mean, I played. I played football, baseball, and basketball. I was not the baseball player that I am, the men's league softball player. Mm -hmm. When I found out they threw the ball underhanded, I was like, are you kidding me? Yeah, I remember totally. being like, are they going to do this the whole game? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, he was. Uh, he he was this whole game. Was yeah, like a men's mile an hour yeah. lob is my speed. Men's man. softball yeah. though, there's usually like a home run rule. Like you can't hit yeah. more than three a game. Oh, yeah, yeah, we've had we've had them where it was like inning ending, where like if you step up your first at bat of the inning, hit it out. It's like y'all go back to the field. Yeah, and that, I've been that guy. That brings us to a very pressing issue. What do you think is harder to hit, a pitcher or a softball pitcher? Like an MLB pitcher or, or a like an underhand? Like the yeah. girls that fucking rip that uh, thing. Is well, I mean, big, is that a big question? That's is that a big, big question because yeah. a lot because it's way different because the ball when you're a baseball player throwing the ball comes and it's up, right, the girls is rising, yeah. and the, yeah. women, the women's rise, and they can they can make that ball move now. What uh, but, but I've seen like some sports science stuff talking about how it's like equivalent to a ninety whatever mile. As the, far as the mounds are close, the mound it's really yeah. close. It's like a little league mound. Mm, I don't know. Gotcha, I don't want to sound disrespectful, gotcha. but, but, but it is like a little. It's like way short. It's way shorter. It's shorter. The reaction time. Yeah. The reaction time. Don't want to be disrespectful to little league mound. Dude, we would go at Michigan. The ball's bigger, okay? So it comes from slack. Uh, we would go at Michigan and uh, play with the softball team and like try to do like a home run derby in their softball field. And we had there was a girl there that was like a two time All American pitcher, and she would fucking rip that thing. I feel Didn't like I've seen ball. like baseball players try to. I feel like I've yeah. seen that happen on like I've videos. I've seen that too, and usually the baseball players send it yard. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> I was gonna say, oh, yeah, if I, oh, like some girls talking shit, and he's like, all right, and it's like the first pitch, and he fucking rips that bat two stories high. 
Uh, it's like, yeah, it's closer, but also the ball's bigger. Like, dude, you're trying to take a 95 mile an hour fastball yeah, from a major it's league player. It's definitely right? different. I'm sure it would take a little getting used to, mm -hmm. but imagine that 95 mile an hour fastball, then all of a sudden like a 72 mile an hour curveball. Like yeah. that's that change of pace, yeah, brother. That'd be so hard to hit. They say it's the hardest thing to do in sports. Hit a curveball. Maybe I have no clue. I haven't tried, tried all of them. Yeah, curling. You know, I mean, people are getting big into curling though. We had George Kittle on here. He's doing curling. Uh, Jared it Allen. Like you gotta have too many ingredients to really enjoy. I like games that you can like, you know, I can get a football off the bus and go out and throw and we can yeah. Yeah. wiffle ball, basketball. basketball. But like curling, you gotta have an ice ring, you gotta have skates, mm -hmm. a broom thing. I don't think you need skates. You don't? No, you're just sliding. But also it's like you need the resources to like Yeah. Have I mean fun like you it. like ham think, down your hardwood floor in your house and play if you want to. But a game that seems fun is pickleball. Yeah, pickleball. Best, People are picking up popular. pickleball. Pickleball is a new I thing. Know, I haven't man. played it yet. I want to play it. We need to get out there this this uh, this summer. I, I, here's my problem with pickleball. It's the same problem I have with like ping pong or pool for that matter. I it's it's such a game that like if you play it, you can be really good at it. I don't like games that somebody less athletic than me can beat me in. Like I want to be able to show up and have an advantage because I'm taller, yeah, faster. Like right. I work out a little bit, in a little better shape. But I don't like it when somebody like is a little nerdier and a little more like yeah. can just like show up and just more of a mortal. Yeah, I don't like yeah. it because yeah. you can practice that like at your house. Yeah, you know, I would like so basketball. Like you know, a guy's gonna show up and me and if I might have a, a advantage. little advantage. You right. know, nah, man, ping pong. What about hey, ping pong's you, not for you. Hmm. Why well, you can just practice yourself too. I don't have a ping pong table, man. Brother, you've done all right. Like, you can go to Walmart and get the $200 ping pong table. Uh, if they notice who you are, you'll get a bucket of balls free, too. Seems like he likes the more masculine sports out there. Yeah. Yeah. Where you can get a little more physical. I don't look at pictures. Like shooting, this, a gun, shooting guns. The, a 5'4 a guy could walk up and smoke me at ping pong. That's what I struggle to sleep at night with. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, I, hats off to him, but I, I'm going to go home and be like, that's what bothers you know what I mean? about the game. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like people that. Uh, but this... you talking about you talking about uh, masculine games like shooting skeet. You can have the same five four guy dust you. Ooh. Yeah, but it, uh oh, but that's like a that's like a a, a, a hobby. You know, I mean, I know this is like Ooh. a like a sport thing, but you you think shooting a gun is like would you call it a sport? I mean, if you get paid for it. No, you really think so? I'm no, pretty sure it plays on like the ocho. I'm, I mean, well, I, I will say this is called shooting sporting clays. Maybe it is, man. Sporting yeah, but clay. just listen, doing the whole rifling deal, that ain't that ain't a sport. I'm not here to I'm not here to die on the hill of whether that's a that's We're a going sport. in the wrong like, direction. That is not, yeah. That's well, not what, that I what I'm trying, trying to fucking take. Spike here. ball. Spike ball's a fun game now. Yeah, that's you get on the little Yeah, the little net. Yeah, man, Baby like trampoline. That, yeah. That's like that's a, a beach game, game, right? Yeah. Beach well, game beach, on the you can do it. Yeah, you can do it anywhere. Yeah. Do it out here if we had enough room. Do a spike ball tournament. You think it'd be all right? I don't know. What does your touring schedule look like? Like how often are we on the road? It's just I, so we're on the way right now. We're from the last one to the next one. God bless. We had four shows last week. I tell you what, we played at eleven thirty one night. Went last Wednesday, college yeah. college station. Yeah, I used to do that all the time, and I'm getting so old. I saw it was like now? five, and I'm just looking six hours before I go on. Brother, How old that's are awful. you now? Thirty four. Yeah. yeah, you yeah. are old. I'm getting there. Yeah, you just feel it more, bro. You just feel it. Yeah, yeah. Have you thought about taking something? For what? Like TRT or like some sort of supplement. What's TRT? Testosterone replacement oh. therapy. Uh, I mean, I I probably should. I think if, if I'd take something like that, I'd want to wait like as long as I could. Mm. Like getting a hip replaced. It's going to last you a few years. You're going to have to do it again. Yeah. You know, I don't want to be like hooked on something the rest of my life. As long as right. I can still get out of bed and like maintain. Move around a little they bit. They got some stuff out there. You'll be solid if you ever got off of it. Really? Like, I don't know if I going to get medical advice here, man. This is yeah, awesome. Yeah, we're here for you, buddy. We're, we're like a jack-of-all-trades podcast. Yeah. We can talk a little bit about everything. Yeah, we're, we're here for you. Can we hit, uh, do some tear talk? I would love to. I, I want to ask him about his uh, his hunting. Dude loves his hunting. You're going to come down Turkey? Yes. You? We we have to come down. Deer hunting. I, you sent me a, a photo. What was the last year you, you got a big one in Illinois? Uh... I don't know if I killed one in Illinois. I killed a big deer in Arkansas. A deer I'd hunted a few years. Big deer down there. Uh, now, are these ranches you have or just uh, you got buddies who... It's a little bit of everything. It's some, some of it's leases that I've had for a while. Some of it's my property. Some of it's buddies' property, you know? Yeah. Uh, I don't got the time to go like I used to, but I think I enjoy it for a different reason. I used to be really like... It's kind of a competitive thing. You and your buddies all hunt. Like, who did this? Who got the most ducks, the biggest deer, whatever. Now, I just like going somewhere that phone doesn't work that nobody's at and you know. peace and quiet yeah man that's, that's what's it. your favorite thing to hunt 
it's tough. It changes. Uh, right now it's turkey season. That's I'm just riding around, just cussed at turkeys in the fields. I see. I get pretty mad at them, but uh, well, I, I I didn't have anybody show me how to hunt when I was growing up. My dad just worked at construction work, and he never got into it. So I can remember turkey hunting for about three years without even getting close to killing them. So I hate turkeys. Just mad at them. Just mad at them. I heard birds are like the most fun social way to hunt because you can like with ducks, you like all sit in a blind. Not turkeys. Not turkeys. No, well, I mean, any kind of, like, upland bird, like quail, pheasant, you're walking around, kind of interacting. Duck hunting, you're sitting in a blind with your buddies, you know. That's very much a social hunt. Turkeys got to be, like, motion, Turkey, right? Turkeys can see, like, on, you wouldn't believe it. Really? Yeah, I mean, turkey be, like, 400 yards out in the field and, like, scratch your nose and just take off. What's the thing about, like, a that's bird crazy, guy? I'll be like driving people. down the road and I'll see 50 of them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that, I, I was true. hunting uh, Label Bird's president eye. would send me pictures of turkey like in his neighborhood, like chasing him to his house when he goes on his morning walk, and I'm running all over the place trying to kill one. But it's uh, it's the like back and forth. You're calling to it, acting like a hen. They're gobbling, trying you, trying to find them and make them. And they, yeah, like I said, they're 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 tough. Basically, to kill. catfishing the turkey. That's right. Yeah, making, making them think, think yeah. hey, love yeah, is yeah. love you is got, upon you. Got you. A little fan, a little fake yeah. hen, yes. you know, and, like shaking his butt. And all Dude, that. I went turkey hunting one time, and it was like three of us were walking back to the cabin, and all of a sudden, a, a tom, right? Yeah. A tom like pops up and then everyone like got on a knee and one dude just held the fan up. And then oh, yeah. he started calling the things like, What the fuck's going on over there? It's a weird looking turkey. He ended up running away. Yeah. He didn't have an opportunity <laughs> to get him. It was like the first time I turkey and I've been hunting like three times in my life. Really? Went deer hunting in Louisiana one time. Sat sat in like a little blind or whatever it's called, a stand. Who'd you go with then? Drew Dilio. We'll see him this weekend in uh LSU. Oh nice. And uh it's shout like, out Drew Dilio. Yeah, shout out Drew Dilio dude. And I sit there for three and a half hours and I saw a bunny rabbit and a butterfly and I was like, what the fuck am I doing here? And plus it's like, you gotta be quiet the whole time. It's very difficult for me to just- You got a lot of, a lot of energy, lot of energy yeah, going on over here. And and I gotta sit there. Shaking the yeah, 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 I'll just move around. The bus yeah. will start. Yeah, but it- it's, Are they gonna come? I did that and I went turkey hunting and so I need to get out there and really kill something to, to feel it. Yeah, I'm gonna feel alive. I wanna feel alive. I wanna like fight a boar or something like that. I wanna do something yeah. real. I wanna do something dangerous. Okay. I don't wanna just- uh, I want to do something precise, like mile away. Get him. We're checking the wind, a little bit more to I the like left. That, yeah, you fucking take his ass well, out. So that's good shot right in the that's ribs. Different than like you're, you're you go sit in a blind somewhere. Mm. Somebody head up and like wait for a deer to walk out. I enjoy the like I bow hunt, mm. so you got to get a lot closer to the animal. So you have to really like what tree you pick to put your climbing stand in it makes that much of a difference. You know, so I like the. You know, the wind's got to be right. Where do you think the deer's bedding at versus what's he, where's he eating? Where's he going? What time's he moving? Checking cameras all the time and trying to like that cat and mouse of it is what I enjoy. Yeah, you're the, you're the reason why if any other country ever tried to infiltrate America, like we're relying on people like you. You got the cameras, you got the feed, you, you're watching these people walk around. Me, I'm dead. <laughs> Quickly. I'm probably coming over to your house as fast yeah, just, as possible. Well, y'all come down to the farm, I'll show where everything's at. You yeah. come hide out down yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, hide. I'll just put me in a foxhole or something like that. Yeah. We'll be all right. You enjoy Have the you, game of the strategy. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I like, I like thinking about it when I'm not even hunting. Like thinking about, man, I wonder if that deer's going to. So this deer I killed in Arkansas that I've hunted for three years, is like it's a bow hunt only unit so you can't gun hunt there and it's really swampy so these deer like swim to where they bed at oh my god and uh i hunted him like i said three years and i took a buddy over there we hunted for four days he busted me going in the sand saw me like just screwed it up you know and so i was taking my buddy home made it to memphis and was like man i gotta go back mm. i stopped and got him a rental car he went home and i went back hunted two more days no luck drove to nashville for a meeting sitting in nashville like looked at panama city see if i was gonna go down to the beach for a couple of days the weather was perfect it was like 65 degrees in Arkansas, rain and miserable hunt weather. I drove back four and a half hours, got up four o'clock in the morning, sat in the dark for two hours because I wanted to make sure I was and killed him that day. That's the big one. Mm -hmm. Man. But you, like, you got to be mad at him. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, drove, yeah. I drove nine hours that day. Sounds like you yeah. took a lot of shit personal to get yeah, that deer. <laughs> and, I, and, and the feeling was like, just like, then I'm good. You know, like if I yeah. get that one deer that I was like really after, then I'm, I don't got to hunt anymore. You said you were hunting him for two years? Oh, yeah. Like when deer season ends, you just like kind of tip the cap to him, be like, "You won this one." I'll see you in yeah, yeah, the battle. Eight months, yeah. See you next time. And then brother. for eight months, you're stewing. You got a picture of him on your oh, mirror look, when you're brushing your teeth in the morning. When I'm, you know, people that like messing on the phone, look at TikTok. I just look through. Deer yeah, pictures and you just like, watch him. He's still around. Yeah. God forbid, a semi truck rolls by and takes him out. Yeah. Because then he won the battle. Yeah. He, uh, I spoke to him one morning, the morning before I killed him. I, hey, now I, I was on a electric bike, Doctor Doolittle, bike, going in. And I see some eyes, and I look up with the light, and he's standing, like, in a place a mile from where I thought he would be at. Like, just completely bust me, and I was just like, you got to be kidding me. And he just takes off. 
I spoke. So to we him. spoke to this deer before. Yeah. Too, so I had some real personal. After the show, I want to see. A, I want to see a picture of it because it sounds you, like this is a hell of a deer. Do you uh, elk hunt? I've been. I, I feel like I feel like you like elk hunting. I, I, I you enjoy do all the hunting pro- and the strategy. Problem is, is like you, you. It's such a short season, and it really to bow hunt an elk, you've got to have time to go find a herd. It might take a week, two weeks, right, you know? right. And I can't. I don't take anything time off. Mm-hmm. So I hunt like if I got Sunday through Wednesday, I'll hunt, and then I'll go play shows and keep myself yeah, on the bus. Deer hunting, you're a lot more flexible. You got to yeah. put in for a tag to elk hunt. You got to draw the tag. You got to do it at a certain time, and I might not even be able to go. Right. I drew a tag the last two years and. The first time I did, I had four days I could go hunt, and one of them got cut short because we ended up going to play a, a show in Dallas. Popped up that I couldn't say no to. So like, yeah. you know, I, I hate to have that much into it and not be able to go. Because mm-hmm. I got some boys in Utah, and they're they're about the elk hunting, and they're you got to like climb mountains and shit, and like hunt these things for like you would like that. I mean, like the physical aspect of you know going Country. after. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking myself, You're like, on, mud, like mud on my face. To, I'm about that. Mud on my face. Yeah. Knife in my mouth. We're fucking moving you around. Spot and salt. That's the kind of hunting you would like. Like you, you spot them, you go up on a ridge and you spot them, and then you go try to get where they're going. Yeah, dude, and get that them. sounds cool to me. Rambo style. Man. Yeah, hell yeah. I mean, <laughs> that makes me sound way tougher than I actually am. The idea of doing it sounds awesome. Yeah, but you got the mustache and everything. You could. I'm you making could fool a, somebody. I don't know if you've heard the news. I'm making a bit of a transformation right now. It's coming soon. What? What? Where you? You'll have to wait and see. Kind of change. Oh, yeah. Right? Easy now. Wait, cool, man. I like those boots though. I will say that. Um, nice. When you uh, <laughs> no, I, now I know what I should have brought him. Boots? Yeah. Yo, I got some eyes, my eyes on some uh, Western Diamondback rattlesnake boots. That's what right. I want. All some right. daily wearers every single day. Yeah, rattlesnake. Anything get you out of them Converse, man? I'll, I'll those get are Vans. Okay. I need you to be a little more respectful of those. Sorry about that, man. First shoes I ever wore. Still, I've had these shoes. Actually, these are relatively new, but I got a pair I've had for nine years. It's you not probably wear both of these sets of shoes right here. Dunks and some some Vans. You've worn these. You've worn these shoes before. You went through a phase in middle school. Nah, man, I didn't go through my the, chemical you, romance. Some dunks? I didn't go through the Jinko phase. I, now, I had some Jinko phase. Hold I on now, brother. Tops. You got to, I need you to back up a little I bit on that Jinko phase. Like Lee Pipes. I had some high tops that were uh, like this in basketball. But yeah. I did, that was like retro, you know, like right, right, right. on the back. But nah, man, that's, those, they look good on y'all. Those are cool. I love it. Cause you, I didn't like that. <laughs> I was going to say, I didn't like that. <laughs> I didn't like the way you said that. Wait, on, so when I'm on Instagram, I see people hunting. There's like all of a sudden a, dare, a bear rips up a tree. And they stand, have you ever had like a, a crazy no, situation I, like that? I haven't hunted a lot of places with it, but I've seen what you're talking about. Yeah. Like, would be absolutely. And they're just in, they're like sitting insane. on those little things. Yeah. Like what, can, just what right can you do? Them. Ba- okay. Bears are a little mushroom, man. That, there's nothing you can do to get away from a bear. Can outrun you, can climb a tree if you get in one. That's tough, man. I saw some one of uh, people on a kayak fishing the other day and two cubs walk by. Yeah, and, and the mom the comes out of fucking charges, nowhere, like, yeah, charges, and the dude just rips off a gunshot, and the bear luckily like ran off. Yeah, it was scary. yeah bears this are is absolutely one of the videos. terrifying, dude. Bears are scary, but I go up to Canada. Trees too. Yeah, I go up to Canada with my wife, and her mom is like loves fishing, and she will like drive forty five minutes in the middle of like BC Canada, go to this lake. You literally have to like hike to for like an hour, and we'll be uh, we'll be fishing, and all of a sudden like you'll hear loud footsteps. Uh-uh. And I'm like, hey, what do we do for in that situation? And Taylin, my wife, her dog's there, and the mom's like, we'll we'll throw the dog at the bear and we'll run. And like all seriousness, yeah, oh, all seriousness. But it's always like, if it's a black bear, you do this. If it's a grizzly bear, you do that. But they're always like, bears are fine. It's the cougars you have to worry about because you don't know they're there until they get you. And mountain lions, cougars, yes, yeah, because they go after the back of the neck. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, that's, that's, that's terrifying. And it's one of those situations. Like, let's say we went hunting, the three of us. We go up to Montana. I got attacked, or I, I saw a bear, and I was in that situation. How dumb am I? What do you uh, mean? Like you literally are. I'm asking myself to be put in that situation. I'll, I could just I'll, stay in Nashville and chill. I love your uh, your not necessarily about hunting, but that mindset. I, I'm like that. Of like, you do like that or don't like I that? I don't. I, I don't like doing things that if I was to die doing it, my buddies are like, idiot, shouldn't have been doing that. Yeah. That's the stuff I like. Helicopters. I don't do. I don't go like. Really? When I go play a show somewhere, and somebody's yeah, like, trying to go. Man, you want to go up with the? No, not doing that. And like my buddies that are pilots, no, because I, you know, all my buddies are idiots. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, really, yeah, that would be some, tough. Yeah, some way, shape, or form. You said every friend you have is a moron. Mm-hmm. You know, and because I don't want to put stupid. my because if if I go up with with Lee and and we got it, Lee. Yeah, you know, I everybody's gonna be like, what the heck was he flying with Lee for? Like, ain't he got more money than that? He's flying his little crop dusting plane. You know? Yeah, man, I think flying's awesome. Like, I I have an obsession with aviation. Lee, man, I love 
What about skydiving? Would you do skydiving? Why am I going to go through that little duster? I just don't think. No, that's so exactly what I'm talking about. Duster relief. You, you, sky, you skydive and I die. All my buddies are like, oh, he had his whole life ahead of him. He had a great career. God, I was there. You never skydive? No. Oh. I would skydive. Mm. I bungee jump too. Would you bungee jump? No. For what? I'm just finding the line for the thrill of the How game. About, if I die, are you if a I died at Six Flags. Mm hmm. That's not too much. And people are like, well, you know. It's a way softer way to go. You see what I'm saying? But I'm candy point, in hand on a roller coaster and just fly yeah. off. But I'm like, th that would be a huge catastrophe. Mm -hmm. If I died cliff diving or cliff climbing or whatever people do, people are like, what the heck was he even doing out there? Yeah. You know what I mean? You ride roller coasters? I want people coasters? to be sad when I die, man. I want people to be like, moron. <laughs> what a fucking <laughs> idiot, idiot, dude. Bro. Brother, if you died skydiving, we'd all be a little, we, we'd call you a moron. But we'd be sad, too. Thanks. Yeah, no worries. We're here. Hey, man, why didn't like he, that why didn't he jump out of the plane? Yeah, that was, that was, that was my fault. Dickies, brother. You ever went through a Dickies phase? Mm-mm. Yeah. -mm. No. You really missed out on a key point in life. I was, uh, I had a sister that was 10 years older than me, so I went through the phase of whatever guy she was dating. He was the coolest dude on the planet. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, I think I became an Auburn fan from that. It was, like, uh, New Balances, I guess, were the thing. Like, cargo, khaki shorts. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. That kind of thing. The pants that zipped. The, the white, shorts. the white college hat that just <laughs> had the little play. stripes and the the letters. You know yeah. what I'm talking about? Those. I had I had a fish hook on them. Like the, it would just be one clean spot with. Larry the, the cable guy fan. I was. This was before that, man. I mean, yeah. I don't know. You're 34. We're, we're so you think Larry the cable guy is a fictional character that compiled a lot of stereotypes of a person into one? Yeah. Yeah. But, so but I had a couple own a get her done things. hat at one point in your life. No, man. Come on now. Blue collar comedy tour guy. I did, yeah. Billingvall, Jeff Foxworthy. Yeah, man, on that was Mike. great. Uh, uh, Larry the Cable Guy came to a show on the farm tour with Luke Bryan, and we're sitting on the bus, me, him, Red Akins, Ben Hayslip, a couple of songwriters, and my dad was at the show and his brother, who've never been anywhere. And they come on the bus, and my dad's like the king of old man jokes, and I literally just sat there and watched Larry the Cable Guy and my dad go back and forth with dirty old man jokes. That's got to be a, something to see. Like, I, I mean, because yeah, my dad awesome. was doing like this while he was telling his joke. You know, like, getting yeah. ready. He's like, I got, I got it. I got it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He, wasn't, yeah. he wasn't even listening to what so he, he held said. up. He held yeah. up well. Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, this was this was fun for me. I took my dad and his brother. First time his brother had ever flown. Like, does not get off the farm. To Nebraska, hunting. Uh, my dad doesn't care anything about hunting. He just, uh, shout out to the state. And, uh, shout out to Nebraska. Sorry. And he, I didn't know if y'all did it there because I was telling a story. So, uh, my dad just makes Whittle's fake arrowheads all day and just like walk in front of him, throw him the ground. Hey, look at that, you know? So, and that's all he did. <laughs> but this is, this is the part that got me. So uh, when I was flying him out there, I got him a flight from Atlanta and I told my mom, drop him off, whatever. And I was like, man, they're, they're not going to know how to like get through the airport. You know, like they'd never flown. Like, mm -hmm. so I called my travel agent and said, is there somebody that like, when, when you have somebody from another country that are like, they can't speak English or whatever, that's never flown and they have to like get, like, there's a person that does it. I said, yeah. Okay, well, just like it's a baby, I need somebody to get them to. And so a lady picked him up and took him through the airport, put him on the plane, and all that. Well, we were in Nebraska and I had to get him a flight back. And I thought, this is crazy. They're they're in their mid sixties, grown man, lived a full life, and I could just leave him here, and they would just have to live here. So yeah. They could never get back. My dad would like walk up to the Delta thing, and go, "Hey, two tickets to Jacksonville, Alabama, please." Like just like it was yeah, a train or something. Right. Like, yeah. You wouldn't know how to do any of it. My dad's the same way. Uh, you. You got to give Bill a little more credit. He made he's it. To he's way. made it to Nashville. He's made it to Nashville driving. Yeah, but he still got out. My dad's never flown by himself. But I mean, like, there's still like directions that you write down. You know, like I don't know that they know how to put a thing in the GPS. Well, that's a, that's it seems like it's on you a little bit to help them out with that. Yeah, but still, they should, time, they should, man. my dad could walk out of an Applebee's and get lost. He has done that before because we moved the car around. We were going to pick him up in the front, and then he went out the side door and we just literally stood there looking around. But, and then he calls my mom like, "Where'd you guys go?" Yeah, but it's Bill. But it's we're at the a, fucking but he called, front, dude. But he called. He figured yeah, that but out. he was lost. He didn't know where he was. He's from a tough place, though. It's from a diff different generation, and they're like, they're not worried about being lost because they'll figure it out. I don't know if my dad would figure it out. But I think he would. Yeah, yeah. My, dad, like, like my dad doesn't. He just does stuff. He don't think about what is like you know yeah. what could it possibly happen. Whatever. Like a tire falls off of the truck, we're going down the road. He's like, I oh, will see if we can get one. He's my, so another tire might have fell off of the fit somewhere close by or something. Like he just, <laughs> he's not like. <laughs> He's optimistic. You got to love There that. is no consequence, man. It's like, it'll work out. You yeah. Know, that's that's kind of how it is. a good vibe to have. That is a good vibe to Older have. parents really got fucked when flip loans fell off the face of the earth. Once technology started getting yeah. in there, really separated, drew a line, line in the sand for all those people. Yeah. Tough stuff. When color came on the phone, too. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Oh, racist. Color. 
Yeah. Come on, come on, guys. Yeah. What's up, dude? Usually, you, you gotta you gotta worry about Taylor every now and then. You can say yeah. a couple words, and he's like, when "Oh, you hear whoa. that accent? I get a little worried myself." His? Yeah, it's wrong. <laughs> wrong. Never know. We always get there. Yeah. We always. Hey, how about that. some tear talk? <laughs> yeah. I thought that's what talk. we were doing. <laughs> yeah, tear talk, oh, Jack. H. Hey, we were we were doing a, our live show at Columbus the other day, and anytime it felt like there's a dead period or anything. Just yell O H and then just That's yell. That's what Will thinks there. happened. What really happened during the show is I would be in the middle of telling a story and then he'd yell O H, <laughs> and people would just crazy. yell I O and I have to regather You're myself. Crazy. Yeah, because we're in it's Columbus. Like, uh, Billy Madison, where he says the whole speech about the dog at the end. He yeah, says like Nip high football rules. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah like That's exactly what it was. We interrupt this episode to shout out Duke Cannon. No free shout outs to the boys at Duke Cannon. They are back on the bus and here to keep everyone looking good and smelling great. Everyone knows that the off season is the best time to put in the hard work and Duke Cannon makes hardworking grooming goods for the hardworking dudes out there. From their thick body wash to their big ass brick of soap and antiperspirants and deodorants, Duke Cannon has your back and your pits. If I can personally endorse anything, it is their coal mining face wash. I hit that shit every day, twice a day, dude. Yeah, just like Jack did. Sometimes Jack, three. Sometimes three. Jack, go ahead and do the gesture you did again for coal mining, face wash. Use code BUSSIN10 at checkout on DukeCannon.com for 10% off, courtesy of the boys to you, or pick up your favorite products at your lo local Target retailer. You might not want to go into Target, but I'm, they got a nice, Duke Cannon's got a nice setup in all the, the, uh, in the, the little beauty aisle. They got a nice setup. Your boys like going around, and I'm like kind of proud about it because I'm like, oh, yo, they rep the boys. Hopefully one day we get, hopefully we get a little smell from the boys ourselves on that shelf. But use code BUSSIN10 at checkout on DukeCannon.com for 10% off or go to your local Target retailer back to the episode. Okay, what you got for us on Tier Talk, brother? Well, I'll tell you this. My mom's really excited about watching this podcast. She loved it all of y'all last <laughs> yeah, time. So yeah. maybe we'd go with best snacks on the road or something. <laughs> yeah. I'm supposed to be look, I get to like cheat. Oh, yeah, this is and I thought this show was live, man. Y'all will rehearse. Oh. No, well, the the we well, can go right now. You want to go off the top? I like it. Let's go off the all top. Right, off no the break then. We all go break. Hey man. Boys well, that's the value. Shout out, yeah, shout out to going on the fly, on. man. Right. Oh, y'all right. cheat? Who's going uh, who's going first? You gotta go first. No, I'm ready. Oh, no, I'm not ready. I'm not ready like that. No, you, yeah, think. do it. Yeah. The back of the bus will go. No, there's only you got to guess. It's just us three. Well, we we can add a fourth row. So no, one I'll, of them I'll, back there I'll can I'll go. Just, oh, I'm, I'm not. I'm like, two seconds. are you I nervous? Two, I need one more. You don't want to do it? Go ahead, rip a few. <laughs> I got it. So is is there is there a right answer? No, 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 this no, is no, your no, opinion. No. It's your opinion. Right. After you three. after you do your tear talk, we will all go around and give one word. About how we feel about how, how you did, about it. And, then, and then we can argue about it. Just, I know what number one is. Don't, don't say, say it. Don't, don't say it. Don't say you got to start tier three, tier two, tier one. Right. You start third. Start you three. Work yep. Yeah. Work it up. Work it up. If you know, yeah. If you got four, okay. you put on honorable mention. Right. I will go first. I'm gonna give uh, my honorable mention is gonna go to my number one candy because I don't like to eat candy a whole bunch, but I do like when you're on a long road trip, you're feeling a little crazy about yourself. The long one gets you some sugar in your boss, and that's gonna go to the Sour Patch Kid watermelons. That is, yeah. that is my honorable mention. My, it's going to uh, get real meaty up here from here on out. It's not going to be a whole lot of variety, but I will say, as a child especially, this is a level of nostalgia for me on Tier 3. I'm going to give a tip of the cap to the Slim Jim. A Slim Jim, as a kid, you get one of those boys, man, that is everything to you. My Tier 2 is just your classic bag of beef jerky. Beef jerky on the way. You're getting that protein in you. You're riding. You're feeling a little bit better about yourself because you made the healthy decision. And my number one, my tier one, is one that I feel like doesn't get enough credit. But it is probably my favorite snack to grab from a gas station. And that is the pork rind. A pork rind goes a long way. You get that little bit of hot in there. You get the, the hot sauce. It's a good crunch, good flavor. It is, uh, it's my number one by far. And that is my tier talk. You guys want to start back there for your word? Hyphenated, low carb. Hmm. Interesting. Hyphenated, stuck in your teeth. <laughs> that is a sentence. sentence. Salivating. New JP liked it. One word. A wor uh, to describe the whole thing? Yeah. Um, filling. 
lost me. I lost you at one. I know I? it could be a negative word, man. Oh, it could be whatever you want. Sucks. Oh, oh, oh. Get out of this. oh wrong. Wrong. <laughs> All right. It was one word, not three, <laughs> motherfucker. You could do if you spit yeah. them out. I can't wait to hear yours. Okay. I hope you. I, I hope you come with some serious wrong. shit. Oh, who's Go going ahead, to Riley. You fucking. Go ahead, brother. Okay. Uh, are you gonna get an honorable mention too? Yeah. If you like, I think Is so. Is this kind of a snack? Damn, that'd be my god tier. Mine goes there. It's like uh, for a long ride, anything to keep your mind off the drive. Sunflower seeds. Doing something, you're eating them. Take it's never really ends. You don't need a whole bag. That's a two or three. I think that's uh, I think that's my honorable mention because it's I, I don't think about them, mm-hmm. but if I need that thing to keep me. Fidgeting, you know. Yeah, yeah. Takes the place of that at times. Right. I've quit dipping several times by doing sunflower seeds. So, you want one? What do you do with it? Nicotine. It's all it is. Helps with focus, multitasking. I'm real focused, man. Oh. Upper lip. Really? Oh yeah. For Dacky. And we got him back I'm on. I'm already. Focused. In a week, he's gonna text me a picture of a can. He's like, can't help myself, dude. It's awesome. Oh, so you haven't really quit. I quit one time. That's real man shit right yeah, I know. there. Yeah. What do you expect? I did that when I was 12? There. Oh, yeah, Hell go ahead. Yeah. Tier I assume, three. I assume those come with a pair of those shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fucking laugh that hard, boys. <laughs> Don't fucking laugh. Uh, I, I'm For the exact same reason, can I use anything that you use? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, watermelon side patch kids, just because it doesn't really do anything. I feel horribly eating candy because it doesn't it has no purpose. My only diet I ever have is just a, what is nutritionally beneficial? Mm-hmm. I don't like the snack a lot, but those are awesome. I get those at the airport all the time. Uh, my travel is a little different than y'all's. I spend my life traveling, mm-hmm. so I've got a lot more of like, uh, what would you say, like uh, wraps, make a lot of wraps on the bus, that kind of thing. But you're talking strictly gas station. You're talking about snacks. You can but say like whatever you want. In the, in the aisles, right? Do we got to be in the aisles? I'm a gas station with this, but I'm talking aisles. about in the aisles, okay. If you're on a tour bus, uh, filet mignon. You can't just, you know. Yeah, I mean, okay. Right. If you go to Buc- Bucky's. But that's what I'm saying. It, but anything it, in there. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go number two, tier two. Uh, chili, sweet chili Doritos. The purple bag. Mm. Did that, they 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 have so much flavor that you don't want to eat anything else after. So as far as like ending your snack and you eat those and you're just going to drink a lot of water and ride. But number one, I don't know what y'all are doing. It's beef jerky. Like I'm going to the gas station, I'm getting beef jerky every time. There's seven compartments on my bus that's got beef jerky stacked in it. Yeah. So I'll do my word first. Confused. Strong. Solid. Solid. <laughs> Veteran. Road dog. <laughs> all right. Um, hey, William. Word? I said strong. Oh. Yeah, mine was strong. They were all positive. What's wild to me is you, 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 you insulted in mine shoot. so much, you had two in the same category as me. Yeah, but where they are makes a big difference. Jerky was two. I know. It's not, it's not close. Like, it's one. Is jerky. It is jerky. And I was going to get nitpicky them. about that, but I decided to let it slide because it's your bus. You know, what do you, so, you, so you just don't like pork rinds? No, uh, pork rinds are great. Okay. It's, it's, it's tier eight at best. Okay. It's because you don't think about pork rinds. You go like, nobody's like, let's go. I got to get some pork rinds. Pork rinds is a happenstance. You walk up and like, oh, that looks okay. Or your dad or your grandma got them. You're like, I'll try one. Brother, you don't go road, like, you grab some pork rinds. Pork that shit's rinds. fire now. I came in here the other day with pork rinds. They're fire, right? Thank you, Mitch. So I feel like you know what you did there. You, I feel like you're projecting something Some else like that you're probably bars. going through. You know what I mean? Hey, Taylor, everyone had their like, word, brother. I know you got to battle it. I know you're trying to win it back. Well, I just I'm confused because it's my two of mine on my list, list are also on his list. But he said he <laughs> said pork rinds. He was wrong. Great. He actually had three words. You don't mind briefing me next time? Just like let it, let everybody else win. Just say. I mean, <laughs> um, end the show. Go ahead. Come on, William. All right. Mine are, I'm going to be specific with mine. My tier three, there's no honorable mention. My tier three, because I love gas station food now. But my tier three is going to be a king size Reese's peanut butter cups. Love Reese's peanut butter cups. My tier two, ranch 
ranch sunflower seeds. Love ranch sunflower seeds. My tier one, and I'm with you guys on the jerky train, but specifically the teriyaki beef jerky, whether it's, I'll go to that if you, you're getting the, like the Jack Daniels kind. Sometimes I'll try to find me like a sweet heat, something that's in the clear bag, like something that might be local that you might feel a little bit better about, but it's always like a teriyaki or a sweet heat beef jerky. Good. Your talk. Thanks, Zane. <laughs> on brand. Convinced. Foundational. Yep. On point. I see it. I see it. <laughs> I see what's happening here today. Taylor, Taylor, this is... It's all right, boys. Hey, Taylor, I'm gonna... Taylor's in his own movie. He thinks it's everybody's against him right now. All right. All right. I did like the sunflower seeds. I didn't think about sunflower seeds. Those were solid picks. Yeah. That was my honorable mission. Sunflower seeds. I know, but it's where it was at. How can we like it when he said, oh, we're see uh, now we're yeah, getting... There it is. Like yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay, yeah, okay. we're getting somewhere now. I will say... I was surprised you put it at honorable mention. Your yeah. specifics of ranch was a little unnecessary to me because I don't think there's another kind of sunflower seeds. Dill pickle goes a long way. I mean, that just, means I just said, you said on point. So right, that's what I'm you. saying. It's because there are some, there's a lot of variety out there, but I'm I think you get a ranch. Go bro, to get them, I, there's, I don't look anywhere else. You're salivating ranch. right now yeah, thinking ranch. about them. Yeah. That makes you grab that water. We should do gas station drinks too. I wish I'd have brought y'all sunflower seeds instead of cigars. You know what I mean? Awesome. No, I'm fired up about We're the just cigars. like, spit them in the floor. What about that? Like, uh, Logan's, you just throw the stuff you just on do the that floor. with the bus now? It's like sunflower seeds up to your knees. That'd be cool. I like it. Yeah. It'd be on brand for us for sure. It really would. Yeah. When do you head off to uh, Indianapolis? We leave midnight tonight, and that's uh, Lucas Oil Why? Stadium. Why do you leave mid at midnight? Uh, a lot of people ask that. So you don't, I, I, for me personally, I don't ride well. I've never ridden any. I always drove growing up. I was always the friend that, you know, turned 16 first, had a car, whatever. Yeah. But I don't ride well, so I have to sleep when I'm on the bus. Uh, and, you know, you leave it, you know, 6 in the afternoon kind of hard to go to sleep so i'll wait till i'm like absolutely tired maybe even drift off then walk downstairs get on the bus and go back right to sleep you got a you got a bed on the bus yeah you got a nice bus it's 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 really nice for me i was really good about because i didn't do any tour support in my record deal meaning my label didn't pay for anything i pay for all my stuff bus and everything myself which is good and bad because i don't have to pay it back later but it's also they're expensive to lease and we just got our third bus we got an 18 wheeler and three buses so I was on first a bus with 12 bunks with like 12 people, which was absolutely miserable. It just had a lounge in the back. Then we got two buses. And so I've always stayed with like kind of crappy buses so that everything seems really nice to me when I get a newer one. Yeah. But this is like an early 2000s bus, like polished brass doorknobs and stuff, you know, from that era. But it's, I mean, it's got a bed and uh, like three or four bunks in the middle and a, you know, kind of kitchen thing. So it's, it's nice, you know. I feel like uh, when he says he doesn't sleep well, it's like, he doesn't like to like not be in control. I just, like I'm always the driving the part. Yeah. The bungee, yeah. the bungee jumping, the ride in the That's helicopter. Fair. I'll go along with that. I, I'm, I'm not a good rider anyway. Like I got several buddies that like, we would go hunting trips and they'd pull up in their truck and they would just get out and get in the passenger seat. I drive their truck. They don't. Nobody drives me. You know. Why is that? I don't know. I just control. I guess I don't. Yeah. Well, to die. well, I got some buddies that are like, you know, making phone calls, doing their taxes. They got the little green visor on and stuff while they're driving. Like, hey, man, just get out. Let me, you do all that over there because I'm driving, you know. Yeah. I dr going, traveling to me is not an experience. I don't enjoy anything about it. I like to get wherever I'm going. So I don't talk. I just, you know, like y'all well, do whatever you want. Tough road, you'd be a tough road dog. I'm not, but, but you would also appreciate because you just be there. Like yeah, you come yeah, get, yeah. I, you don't have to talk to me or stay awake, go, lay in the back, put pillows, just go to bed. And I'll wake you up when we get there. Oh, yeah. How's, what's the longest you've driven at one, like, oh, at one period? I, I got done playing a show in uh, Auburn a few years ago at a fraternity house. Left there at like midnight. Got to Jacksonville where I live at 2 in the morning. Picked two of my buddies up. We were going to uh, Wisconsin. Uh, deer hunting. 17 hours. And we were going to stop every six or so. And I was drove all the way. Really? Yeah. And through the night, too. Oh, yeah, it's more yeah. impressive. But hunt, it was going hunting, you know. Like, I'm, I get fired up. I'm ready to rock. I'm going, yeah. Dial. That's your. Is that your number one favorite thing to do? Is hunt? Yeah, yeah, probably so. I, I enjoy now because I've had some. I've killed some big deer. I mean, I'm duck hunting for several years in turkey hunting. I enjoy taking people. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't being as nice. It seemed like when I invited y'all down to the place, I, I like especially people that haven't really done it a lot or haven't had killed a turkey or whatever. Like there is some hunts that I don't care what your beliefs are as far as like. You know, if you don't like hunting, you don't like this, that. There's some hunts that I don't care who you are, you would enjoy. 
you enjoy something about like going duck hunting and being out in the middle of a swamp in the morning, like sun just coming up and like knowing that there's no reason anybody else on the planet would ever be where you are, like standing in mud in the middle of like this. That's awesome. That doesn't get old. And yeah, we got to get down there. I do want to come check that out. And you the know, video you sent of your spot too, very impressive. Yeah, I've got a, I've got a nice little cigar room with a bunch of, I mean, it's got this kind of a feel in it, you know, mm -hmm. well y'all come down there we can, uh, we can do I'll come up with some fun games, list games, you know, and, we'll, and y'all can do my show down there. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I mean, we would love to. I'll sit in the comfortable chairs. You're not comfortable? No, it's fine. I got all this stuff over here that's not mine. And uh, and yeah, and y'all can sit on the couch like in a weird angle, and I'll get some of my buddies that <laughs> that don't have anything to do with it to come like sit just off in the distance behind some bright lights that you can't look Hell at. Hell yeah. <laughs> you can't tell if they're judging you or just like. On, on their phone. Place it is, it, it is nerve wracking when they're quiet in the back and you're kind of just talking oh, for great, 30 man. minutes. It's great. Really, it's a lot of fun. It's a good crew back there. Do you guys have any questions before we let them go? Are you an Alabama fan or an Auburn fan? Oh, he said he's an Auburn fan. I well, know, yeah. but in the songs. From, 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 from fans, that is a very common uh, confusion. I'm an Auburn fan, but my granddaddy... Lyndon was such a big Alabama fan and like, you know, just was such a fan of him. It was like, I kind of had respect for it. So I would say I'm a good Auburn fan. When Auburn and Alabama aren't playing and, and Alabama's doing well, I pull for them to win. There's a lot of Auburn fans that are the other way. that are just like cheering for any team that Alabama's playing. But I, you know, there was a few years when uh, Nick Marshall and Cam Newton and uh, Alabama and Auburn swapped national championships for like, what, five years? You know? You were hype. Yeah, man. Come on. <laughs> Greatest robbery ever. What do you, well, no. What do you think is the best uh, college football conference? Big 10? Uh, who y'all got on next, man? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, Who's somebody, I guess, in your career that you've met or at least knew of that you ended up either really enjoying or vice versa that you looked up to and then found out they maybe were an asshole or something of that nature? Yeah. That question gets asked a lot, you know, because my success was so recent, you know, like cause I'm meeting a lot of people and hanging out with a lot of people that I was just a big fan of. I haven't really met the asshole. That's what everybody wants to know. But it's like, I think that in this business, everybody has kind of been where you are. And also everybody kind of works together. You know, Nashville is really a small town in the industry and you kind of can't get away with being like that, you know? So everybody kind of pulls for you and everybody's been really great to me. I mean, I, I've, uh, I was a huge fan of Jamie Johnson growing up and uh, wrote with him week before last at his house. And like just seeing how similar we write and how similar we kind of grew up. And that it, it really kind of it's, it motivates you because you, you realize that all these people that you thought were this giant star or whatever is really just regular people, you know. And I'm still finding that out, which is pretty cool. That's sick, dude. Writing with Jamie Johnson. Yeah, man. It's uh, I'll tell you this. He, he, he was he was tough. Because a lot of people write different, and some people have like a lot of like they throw a lot of stuff out, just random. And some of it's garbage, but just like there are people that write with that style of just like saying everything, and then sometimes you just pick through it and find stuff that works. Some people kind of write in their head, and they'll like try to write a whole verse kind of to themselves and then say it, you know. Mm -hmm. And some people get really excited when they hear things. And Jamie's like just so he doesn't give you a lot. So I say a line or whatever, and he just get up, go in the kitchen, pour a cup of coffee, and come back, sit down. And I'm already thinking about something else because he hates it, you know. Yeah. And he's like, "That's one of the best lines I've heard." I'm like, "Oh, real? I've, I've already scribbled it out. Like, I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to rewrite that. I forgot. I forgot the line already. But that's that's the tough thing. It's trying to go through the personalities of writing and find out how you write with certain people. We'll write a song when y'all come down. Yeah, on your show. Yeah, on my show. Nothing to do that. Learn to do that. Hey, that'd be fun. Yeah. Going down, I just feel like that'll be a good time. That'll be. How long's turkey vibe. season? Uh, came in. Well, this is March, right? Yep. Okay. Last week. Uh, goes out the f first week of May. You got all April. We got to figure out a time in April. I mean, I'll I'll just text y'all when I'm gonna be off the road and home for a couple of days. If I slip in here, y'all can jump in. We'll ride down and hunt a day or two, man. Yeah, well, yeah. you know you're driving. Y'all can be the first episode of my hunting show. Taking taking y'all out. Would you ever want to do a hunting show? I've done them. I've, 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 like your own? Yeah, I've, I've co-hosted a bunch, but as far as having my own, uh, I don't remember who it was that said it, but they had a really cool idea. It was called Going In Blind. Obviously, duck blind, deer blind, but like taking people that have never been or that don't hunt. Hell yeah. Like explain, explaining all that and like let them shoot and do all that. I think it'd be really cool. 
and like getting them different shoes for the terrain. I just went on skateboarding up to the turkey. I uh, <laughs> appreciate y'all having me out again. Hey, this was a good time, bro. Thank it kinda, you. It was kind of a good time. Yeah. The <laughs> first, thank y'all for being on here today. Yeah. Please subscribe, rate five stars, and as always, big hugs, tiny kisses. Thank you.